I've uncovered something. Typically, this is the 80% rule. When a Japanese anime starts with the explicit buzzing of cicadas, it's going to be a good show. <laughs> oh, so yeah? literally okay. like the first 10 seconds, when I just heard the cicadas and then it flashes to uh, him in his apartment watching the news, I was like, bro, this show is setting the tone right uh, away. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Facts. This yep. guy knows his yeah. shit, man. Dude, That's what's beer? up. Thank you. It's not. It's Dude. not to indicate that summer in Japan or anything. Well, no, 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 no. about that. <laughs> I was Those cicadas say... are always there, man. <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast. This is week one of the spring 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hello! Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello! And finally, we have Justin. Hey, everyone. All right, so, uh, don't really have any, uh, much anime news besides, I guess, uh, big ones, uh, Hero, uh, no, sorry, the Demon Slayer movie, Mugen Train. All the tickets are available for for at least U.S. or North America. Uh, so me, Stran, we and Koo, yeah, me, Stran, and Koo, <laughs> we have our tickets. So we're watching it Thursday night, and then we'll we'll definitely discuss discussing about it, uh, later, uh, either as a separate episode or like or as part of the podcast. We'll we'll definitely talk about it after that for after it airs. So look forward to that. And then um, we got an uh, anime announcement for for a couple of cuckoos. This is the uh, the author of uh, Seven uh, Yam- Yamada and the Seven Witches, and also uh, the Mega Nechan and Yankee Kun. So I guess she has a new manga out, and it's turning anime. So I'm looking forward to it because I really enjoyed Yamada and the Seven Witches. So same. Did you read it, David? I I read a little bit of like after the first anime, but I didn't, I didn't finish. I know I know Peter read all the way to the end, so. Gotcha. Love to ask gotcha. him. Yep, anime was really good. Comedy spot on. Yep. So looking forward to uh the next that next series. Uh, so let's jump in. We got a uh, new season. Some of the shows we talked about last week already. So and then some of them we have uh that just aired this week, and then we still have a couple of our shows airing starting tomorrow. So still haven't. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So we'll try to get as much as we can, and then um feel free to let us know if we missed anything or you guys want to discuss more so always appreciate it uh we're gonna start with our first show uh vivi fluoride's eye song which i guess they'll explain later but yeah this is episode three so it's crazy that, like like this is the first two episodes aired last week and we're on episode three so this right. is gonna finish up really early <laughs> <laughs> we'll see definitely so, unique so my theories were completely out the door once we found out that it was actually a 15 <laughs> 15 year time, time skip. skip. 15 years. I was yeah. going to ask, is this is this enough, David, in terms of the <laughs> the one time the I don't progression of time timing? Skip. Wow. Oh, the time I didn't think that you wanted. I know we had 100 years ago, but I didn't think 50, we just skipped 15 years just like that. So that's actually hey, we're skipping through the yeah. show, just like uh, just like how fast it's going this season. Yeah. Jesus. I don't know. No, it's uh, yeah, the, like the whole thing that we talked about like last week, where I thought like, oh, maybe this was like all like a mind battle or something like that. No, it was all it was all actual. But you just overthinking it's, that Reddit thread. You, yeah, because it's like you know who's gonna who would really do like a fifteen year time skip and, uh, and then uh, boom, right, here we go. Freezer author, yeah, hold, hold my yeah. beer real quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a that was a definitely. I did not see that happening. But now they're in space. Um, they got uh, more crazy final animals. frontier. So I was <laughs> so the 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 owner of the space station, um, Estella, like. I thought for sure they're gonna like, like, try to beta. So say like, like you have to kill her, but it turns out she's actually really good. And then they baited me with that last scene, so <laughs> I was wrong. And they're like, hold up. I, I mean, I legit thought you it was thought. the pink hair girl. Yeah, I, I thought it was like, yeah. gonna be the pink hair girl. I thought like you know the blonde was gonna be fine. Like maybe something changed in time, and then they had to go for the pink hair girl. So then when she was like talking to somebody, I was like, oh yes, here we go. Yeah. And then just a snap of the neck, I was like, okay, I guess. She might I mean, be they, definitely, they definitely do focus on that misdirect when uh, Vivi is talking to the pink haired girl in the locker room and she's asking her about it still. And she's just like, yeah, don't trust that bitch. And she's like, oh, <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. We just need what the motive is now. So, no, yeah, that ending equally uh, caught me off guard. And I, I will say one of the things that I consistently love that I think the show has done every single episode is 
just the constant reminder of, you know, all of these characters that were being introduced to the fact that they are AIs. So like specifically with Vivian Estelle, like the the number of times that like they focus on their eyes and they're showing, you know, like the multiple robotic layers just for you as a viewer to be like, all right, you know, don't forget all these things are a bunch of AIs. <laughs> they may act like, you know, real people and all these things, but I just love like that small detail of that focus. Dude, mm-hmm. with studios animation, like they're they're like they're uh they're like was it um still images are so good. <laughs> Definitely. Of just like those shots. I like the, the when they had showed the the space uh skyline whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that was insane. That was really good. Um I don't know. And and I know Justin you mentioned this last time too. Man, I, just, I fucking hate Matsumoto. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's worse is I didn't I I didn't realize it's 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 fucking Lelouch's voice too. So, but he does oh, he, he does really? he does the voice he does the Triceratop voice in Amagi Brilliant Park. So okay. it's it's that voice it's that voice that really bothers me. It's what wow it, now, that makes a lot just, of sense. I think of the, Tricer- the Triceratop man in that fucking teddy bear. Hey, he was way better in the Triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> wow, rude. So. Uh, because I was also first thinking that Matsumoto, um, it was it was Justin's theory about how like man, this guy's gonna be hella, hella like evil. So I thought like you know they they're gonna find out like or that uh, that Vivi was gonna find out something with Matsumoto where he's just kind of like following stuff, but then find out that 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 girl uh, that the AI girl is actually good. So I was like, okay, we're gonna maybe go down this path, and then all of a sudden, but you but then we still find out like she's evil, or at least or not like really evil, but maybe like different motives. No, still, no, it, you, you don't think so because it still evil. sounds like. Because it still sounds she's like she's like evil. okay. Do you think you think she's actually evil, or do you think of like the the past, like the past uh, owner, like had something to do with it in a sense where like let's say because she said something about how like it was like his like final wish or something. Like what right. if he just basically said just burn this place to the ground <laughs> like right before he passed? Do you I think mean, that's a chance? <laughs> it's possible that her e- evilness stemmed from her previous owner for sure, but she's still evil. I mean, did you right. not see the way? She snapped that girl's head off. I saw it real quick and just like, yep, I was right there. <laughs> so. I, was with, I was with David, you know. I was probably with that pink haired girl, but nope. Turns out it was Estella the whole time. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, b- before we forget, um, we also found out that that, that uh, a much more intense law passed than the original one that was that was uh, that was uh, yeah, the, the about. naming, the naming, yeah, the naming one that, where they actually yeah. said like this one was supposed to be like even oh. like more I, that's more to my point because uh, sorry david uh but just yeah. real quick that's more to my point of like matsumoto being this yep. you know character <laughs> that you really can trust because immediately when vivi tries to bring that up of like hey i did what you told me and the naming law just got you know amplified to something different and i believe you know even after that matsumoto's like oh yeah you know no worries that's not a big thing so like he's yeah, really just continuing to like brush things under the rug of just like you know not letting vivi have like a valid voice and just be like no 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 just do what i say like we're gonna stop this hundred year war and it's like whenever i see that kind of stuff it's like yeah you know people are just like pulling some some shady shit this teddy yeah. bear he ain't he ain't cute at all get <laughs> this, fair, get this guy it, out it, of was, here. it was also due to like vivi's emotional rant that she had when she saved them that caused him to change his point of view mm-hmm. yeah so like, if she so if she would have stuck to the script that Masumoto had i think his plan would have went off without a hitch so mm, okay Fair, fair. Yes. Well, that is true. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. It's still, like, it's still sketchy. How like he just leaves like for fifteen years, and he says that's because he doesn't want <laughs> to <laughs> disturb the history too much. But it's like you're already doing that. Uh, yeah. Like, going back, so it's yeah. Like you're already changing like a crazy timelines, uh, or preventing it. But at, at the same time, like because he's like because it seems like he, he would be like power like almost like powering AIs. But it's like at the same time, what would be the point of like preventing like this hotel to be, uh, you know, um, he said, cra- like, have it crash into the earth? Yeah, oh, he, he told he, you. Yeah, he, he said in the show that uh, it makes people more anxious about AI, and then the, the anti AI group becomes stronger, and then that, oh, that sorry, creates no, the war. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, I meant like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going like the evil mind, like basically like the evil Matsumoto, not not the wholehearted Matsumoto. But I meant like, you know, why would he be trying to like prevent this? Uh, like if if he was actually well, evil, why wouldn't you just let it happen? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry. Right. In these in this genre, like AIs are never evil. It's just like they're just programmed to do things logically. But like it would, so it doesn't seem evil to them. But like it's just bad for us. So, but Skynet. Like, I guess yeah, it's, basically. it's to David's point of like, what do you define as evil? Like you know, we have good and evil in terms of maybe like a, a human perspective. But then when you go to an AI that takes things extremely literally, as you know, ones or zeros. 
then that mm-hmm. definition kind of changes, you know? Right. So, like, and kind of earlier... Be yeah, something more human because, like, because she really she wants to save everyone, whereas like Matsumoto is like calculating like you we gotta sacrifice these people for the greater good. So he doesn't mm. want hesitation. No, yeah. but he probably doesn't so. doesn't think that's evil. He just thinks that like oh, figure number is better in his mind. No, I guess how do you feel about you know that trait that you just mentioned with Vivi David in terms of like her seeming to be like the you know, unique exception to AIs that's it's, able to kind of it's think kind of, beyond, you know, the ones and zeros. It's kind of weird. Do you feel like that's a, a weak plot device or? It is kind of weird because she's supposed to, she, they say she's like the first autonomous AI, she, which I, I think they generally mean like the first like like general AI. She's not like programmed to do one specific thing like everyone else. She can oh. do multiple things. But it's like, if she can think, if she has can think like that, why is Matsumoto like not, you would think he'd be better because he's from the future and more advanced, but it seems like he doesn't have the emotional stuff that Vivi does, unless like, unless it's by design. So it's yeah. it's kind of weird that she she sticks out in that way compared to the other AIs. Unless he's a program to basically just like, because um, he still said that that law is still in place like a hundred years from now, where mm-hmm. like every AI is basically programmed to do one specific thing. So what if he's actually like his specific program is basically to complete this mission? as like on point as possible mm, maybe yeah yeah no i i just want to say that he's just think of him as like a like a soldier unit like his objective is all he cares about just completing his mission his mission was to go back in time and stop these key events from happening so that what happened 100 years later doesn't occur so um and when you think of it as that way since he is ai he's not letting emotion come into play kind of as to how like vv is letting it uh, take control of like the decisions that she's doing. So I feel like with that balance, that's uh, it's important for him to be the way he is, and I think it's important for Vivi to be the way she is, so that the outcome is more promising, I guess. If you think about like the bigger picture, so that makes sense. I can't help but feel like to the, that point that you mentioned, Ku, of like if Matsumoto is you know acting on this more kind of like regimented focus. I feel like there's definitely going to be potentially something where, you know, he thinks if he follows X, Y, Z, that it'll prevent, you know, the the atrocities that happen at the end of these hundred years. But I feel like it's going to cause something potentially worse because he doesn't really know, you know, and even like the doctor that sent like that code from the future, they don't really Mm -hmm. know like, hey, if we change these things, like, yeah, we believe then AIs won't revolt against humans. But I feel like something different is just going to happen in its place, maybe. Well, plus yeah, Vivi's changing. Sure. Vivi's not not following everything to the point either. She's actually right. she's you know she's changing things up as well to like to um what did he he call it like uh where uh acceptable uh levels or whatever it was. Where they basically oh, yeah, like, like, of like deviation. Yeah, yeah, basically where like it's fine. Yeah. But it's anybody having any issues with the show yet or no? Um, I don't know. Issue is like I thought. I mean. I thought the first episode like kind of wasn't as um like it took a little bit to kick in, but I think like the last two episodes are made it really interesting. So I don't know. Is that something? Yeah. It's not really yeah. any outstanding issues I can say. I have to like wait till after this season to really like nitpick on anything. I like it's been really good so far. Man, this ReZero yeah. creator when he's actually given like an anime where it's like basically from scratch. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, the thing that has me somewhat hesitant is the fact that we do only have 13 episodes and we are three yeah. episodes deep. Yeah. Um, I think, the, you know, the 15 year time skip definitely helped because if we thought about it before, it's like, OK, how the hell are you going to get through 100 yeah. years worth of events? Yeah. Um, so I think with what we've seen so far, obviously, they'll take like the jump in periods of times if they you know go with what's shown. And it's probably going to be more like episodic events of like, OK, now we're, you know, at this many years in the future, it's going to deal with this you know, certain group of individuals or specific event that Matsumoto knows has to be altered to, to change the future. Um, but it definitely seems like they're also hinting towards the um, the guy from the anti-AI organization, Toga, I think they were called, that Vivi saved oh, in to- the second T-O-A-K, episode. T-O-A-K, Tok, or whatever? Oh, that oh, one Toka. dude. Is it Toka? Yeah, Toka, I think it's Toka. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they showed either in the ending or opening now or in the small scene, they show him now what he looks like after the, th- the 15 year jump. Oh, I may have so, missed that then. I'm going to have to go back. Uh, and it that. seems like he'll be, I think it was during the, the ending because I think this was the first time they showed either the ending or something. I just remember okay. that they gotcha. did. So, yeah. 
a th- they'll be coming back as recurring characters for sure the only thing i'll say is like i feel like most anime originals i don't feel like they really get strong for th- by 13 episodes i feel like you really need two seasons yeah. so that's yeah. like my only worry it's like i feel much more comfortable yeah. with two seasons and just one yeah so. wondering <laughs> exactly we, we will see you know they're building yeah. this really exciting world now it's just like oh shit like all yeah. right you better have this shit planned out <laughs> yeah but it's it's holding up yeah so excited one of my see. top ones i look forward to yeah, yeah. excited to see what's happened what happens next yes yes yep so i think we're gonna end it there for vv Move on to our next show um, now this one we're gonna talk about uh 86 so the first episode aired here um now this one was uh definitely my favorite so far. Actually, before we start, let me go check real quick. Uh, okay, this is by A One Pictures, so a lot, so a lot of Anaplex. There's also like this is basically is based on a light novel too. I know there's a lot of hype around this from the light novel readers. So and I can see why because first I thought the first episode was really strong. So I thought it was good. Yeah, I know uh, Taylor, you had some good parts. I was good. Some good points to this one. I don't know if you remember them. Um, are you talking about like what I found online? About what's uh, going on? I think so. It, it was basically well, shoot, should we? Okay, never mind. Maybe we'll skip that for now, just in case if it was spoilers. Okay. Um, <laughs> because actually, no, we found out through Ku that it's actually in the synopsis. Um, that oh, wow. they were, uh, that uh, that that there were actually like uh, people in those things. Um, oh, right. It's not actual. <laughs> it's un- actually in the un- man drones. There's actual yeah. people inside of these things. Piloting yeah. them, well, and then uh, yeah. The, uh, if you don't want slight spoilers for episode one, do not read the description of the show, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But I mean, even when I read the description uh, by watching the show, I kind of just forgot about the synopsis until the ending, where it kind of picked up the point that you know there there is a slight twist to it. So I mean, um, well, you know, to kudos fair, to the show for doing that. I guess to be fair, I hadn't read. I didn't either. Uh, I, I I read a little bit of the synopsis, but to be fair though, you can kind of tell that they're gonna, it wasn't actually on man with the way that the episode was going. Like when they talk about like District eighty six, and then and then the way that um the main character was talking about them, like I could pick up by that sense, like oh they're actually real people. So I well well <laughs> I feel like even in the <laughs> opening, isn't the opening where we first get introduced to Reaper or this unit where one of the handlers is trying yeah. to tell them to execute one strategy and then no he doesn't strategy. do that and he's just like, What are you doing? Like, don't do this and then you can kind of feel like there's obviously more human emotion in that interaction, even though they're not like physically showing like yeah. either the handler or so, the, the so people it's not really from that the much of a spoiler. Just... You you can pick it up like the first half of the episode. Well, I actually thought um, uh, I she just really like. I thought she just really liked AI <laughs> first. Yeah, until, that's what I thought too. You know, but. <laughs> until it started showing like more and more. What I thought, okay. where I was getting more obvious. That nonetheless, that long story AI. short, go in blind. You'll have the best effect going in <laughs> yeah, blind. Yeah, exactly. exactly. it was fun. It's, it's, it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely confusing. Like it really, it really drops you into everything, and you kind of have to, you're like sitting there spinning your wheels trying to figure out okay, what exactly is going on. But I, I think it's worth it to go through that that little bit of confusion i think it's it mostly cleared fun. up by the end yeah. it does yeah. what like light novel shows love doing they love dumping all this exposition in the first episode but <laughs> i will say this though that my mark for hasbondo for this show died by the end oh, the house yeah. so that yeah. was my guy and i was oh, like you've yeah. got to be kidding me <laughs> okay. you mean the casual mc from like dude, he looks just like hero from gumden uh, I don't know if you get. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he has that. He has that generic MC like badass. Uh, no, 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 not, not like, that guy. No, 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 no. She's talking about the guy that died. He that he had only killed at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, the guy like, that died. Yeah, okay. the guy that died. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I think his name was like. I forget what his name was. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, he just loved Could that cat. Thank you. So he just like he just loved that cat. So. Oh no! You knew the minute when the cat was taking food from everybody and then he jumped on him. At you're just like ooh. This guy, I don't know if this guy's gonna make it. Yeah, a little foreshadowing action. <laughs> supposed to be bad luck, or um, yeah. I, I guess so. so. Cat hates you. Yeah. I'm One of the things I'm curious oh, yeah, go, about this show ahead, is go. with the like the other race, basically the race that we're like initially introduced to, not the ones that are fighting. I'm really curious, like why they all look literally the same. Like, they I mean, have I, white hair and the yeah, exact was, shade of white hair. There's not even any differences or anything. But like, you know, because like. There's a lot of races here in our world that are born with black hair, but they're still like 
different, you know, different yeah. shades. But these people are identical to each other. No, so I'm kind of trying to figure out what's going on with I that. I didn't even notice Definitely that. Definitely probably wow. some, like, genetic manipulation. Or if they're really reaching at straws, then, like, this elite group that obviously solidified itself at some point, they just kind of kept breeding within, you know, that that genetic pool so that they mm -hmm. wouldn't have any var uh, variety of, just uh, because of people they, they, and how they look. They just I, like that white, bluish tint hair. And I didn't even notice didn't that. that so. But that makes more sense why, like, I mean, the, one of the, the 86 people call them white pigs. It makes so much more yeah. sense now. I mean, I hate to make the reference, hair. but they basically are, like, Nazi-esque in this mm -hmm. regard. Hey, where, no, you know, they, is they that, that a, blonde, eye, blonde hair, blue eyes kind a of glorious mentality. glorious yeah. republic fighting against the evil empire. <laughs> <They're just> yes, <laughs> saving yes. This for humanity. Yes. No. Um. I actually, that was the big thing that really drew me in. Admittedly, was um just kind of this focus of war and kind of these propaganda esque like ideologies that are being introduced in this you know class um divide that exists. I, I remember like one of the parts when we're introduced to uh, Lena, uh, the main major girl that has you know these feelings for the eighty six. Um, when she's first arriving at headquarters and she's seeing like all the other uh, handlers either like slacking off or like drinking and talking, you know, shit about these quote unquote lesser humans. Um, I kind of enjoy that in the sense of because it gives me that code Geass vibes where there is this very heavy oppression being made. And I'm sure as kind of the plot progresses, we're going to see that kind of divide be shattered and then, mm -hmm. you know, kind of come to the forefront more and more. I also think it's kind of curious to see, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, because it occurred to me just now, but when she was so excited to eat like that cake and those cream puffs because they were made with like real life actual real ingredients, yeah. um, dairy in this case, um, that was obviously considered a treat and something that wasn't normal. But then you cut to the 86 and they've got like chickens and all of this other stuff that they have access to. So like what's going on with their resource management too? I'm really like, curious about that. Like there's a lot of context stuff to pay attention to yeah show we don't know enough yet about the, the larger world of how did you get to this point and who mm -hmm. kind of you know is holding the the reins i wonder, I wonder if they're making for, that for connection between like like a utopia or like everything's <laughs> in, industrialized and processed where it's like even though like mm -hmm. they where they're i guess they're not as well off but they're like being more natural so i want to try and make that mm -hmm. that connection um that, yeah. cream, that cream puff looked disgusting yellow it did look yeah, disgusting. I, I was expecting it to be white yeah. i mean like when that thing hit the, the floor i was like yeah it probably it should have been there anyway speaking of that scene <laughs> yeah. um i was surprised how like the tone shifts in this episode like where it where, where she dropped the cream puff and then suddenly went to like her unit just dying basically yeah, somebody getting his brains blown and out then, or something and then the second half when it went to 86 people and then it went from that that happy like cafeteria scene to them like in the battlefield so I actually really like that tone show. I think they nailed it. Like it, mm -hmm. it hits that impact well. of like I agree of how serious this show wants to be. Where I mean, it mm -hmm. has, it it's a balance like trying to be like lighthearted and at the same time show like like how serious war is. So I really like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. saw that. I'm like, oh god, 100%. what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> The the one gripe I will say for me is uh, I know we haven't seen enough of the 86 yet, and I think they do have a very diverse cast of individuals. It looks like, whereas I think with um the like utopian republic i'm not really expecting much from their characters i think you know we've seen lena we've seen um scientists uh, annette or, or the uh, doctor, yeah the scientist yeah. the head of our r d doctor and then we've seen uh lena's uncle who is the head or at least higher up in the brass of this yeah. army and then also we learned like her father died through you know some means mm -hmm. um but for me I, the one thing i will say is, is i'm a little bit not concerned, but not as hype off the main character from the 86, because <laughs> one, he, he reminds me of, if any of you guys watched uh, Out of Noah Zero, he reminds me of oh, the main yeah. character from Out of Noah Zero, where he's, he's going to be this very, like, stoic. intelligent, and, like, yeah, stoic yeah. and uh, protagonist, where he just can kind of get people out of most situations. But I will say I was glad that, you know, then one of them did die at the end, so it shows that he can't save everyone. But I couldn't help but making that comparison um, of he's just going to be, you know, this super soldier that can kind of get them out of most pinches. He also well, has a very a generic look, too. Yeah. <laughs> But does. with the generic look. Yeah. Yes. But I'm, the generic so, hero look. I'm looking forward to him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like those kind of strong um, characters in, in battle, like the strong, smart characters. So I always I'm mm. looking forward to how, how he, he acts on the battlefield. Yeah. So. It's better than being completely overpowered. Um, do we know yeah. who they're fighting? 
So uh, they're fighting uh, the neighboring country. Yeah, the Giardian Empire. Yeah. Is okay. What so they didn't mention it. I just missed it. Okay. They're, yeah. yeah. Uh, their name, their country is like it's like the Republic of San something. San oh boy. Mag, something. Magnolia. Magnolia. Yeah. All you have to do is say Republic, and you know it's not gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Let's not go that far. I got some, I got some right. Star Wars action. Right. <laughs> the Great <laughs> Republic. Trent just yeah. wants to live in. Oh the yeah, Galactic. sorry, it's missing the Great. He just wants to live in the Galactic Empire. <laughs> she thinks. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. And then the only other thing I'm curious about too is um, like they keep mentioning how like this is all gonna be obsolete in two years. So I wonder what's that like? Why like? Why are, so why are they so confident? Why they so confident that this got end, or like either the wars got in two years, or like they can replace the eighty six like I mean, like processors in two years? So they could easily be lying to them too. Uh, that could be a thing too. It could be another well. propaganda yeah. focus that yeah, we just, just basically don't know say like, like, yeah, you can just yeah, tell them guess. like, hey, you only have two years left, and then you know, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if it you, would make sense because it's to the. Or go ahead, David. Either that way, or it could be like I just feel like they keep bringing it over because it feels like foreshadow, like like. Like some like new super, super weapon or like a, nu- a nuclear bomb or something. I don't know. Like that's what I'm mm. thinking. Like like something to end just a final thing to end in, in two years. Yeah, but it could I mean, be also. I, I guess propaganda. I guess for me, it, it seems like yeah. From their end, it's like they're just full of confidence from a propaganda standpoint. And even like in the the opening scenes when we see Lena, you know, there's the announcement made over the uh, the televisions and broadcasting, and it's like. Oh, you know, attention all great, you know, people of the Republic of San Magnola. We'd like to report that we've had another successful battle with no, you know, no fatalities, fatalities and everything. So, and everybody's, you know, cheering and Lena's just kind of like, huh, like, right. Cause you know, they know what the, the truth of it. So a lot of just kind of blind eyes to yeah. what is really going on. So, yeah. but I'm, I'm looking forward to the show. It's, uh, it was a very yeah. strong first episode. Yeah. A lot of shows in there. Kind of th- uh, follow this. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I think yeah, it'll probably be more about like the interaction between the main character and the eighties, like the the handler and the processors. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how much political drama this gets to annoy Stren. Well, hey, this has a point to be political. Okay, I saw a lot of other things with Log Horizon basically posting like, "Why is Log Horizon garbage now?" Like, sir, <laughs> sir, we don't talk about that here. All right. Yeah. Okay. My we'll bad. My bad. That here. was last season. Last season. New season. Yes, yes. Okay. Also, also uh, uh, was it shout outs to that opening scene, even though it was CGI, it was still really good. Yeah. I thought it was really yeah. good too. I had I paused oh, yeah. and I was like, damn, that was intense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you guys see this? I'm getting better with the CGI now. <laughs> I'm more accepting of it. Uh huh. Oh, good uh-huh. CGI. Good no, CGI. No, no, no. We need make him watch Berserk again. Yeah, we need, we need Berserk 2016 to come back. We need that yeah, kind sir. of CGI. Again, we don't talk about that here. Okay. That I know. That, I that, know. that doesn't happen. There's here. the original I, series I, I and there's so the bad. movies. That's it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what? 2016? Yeah, what? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're wrapping up for 86. So I'm super hyped. This is my. At least, at least my favorite first episode so far of the season. Probably my hype uh, show of the season. So looking forward to future episodes. So that'll be it for 86. Move on to our next show. Um, uh, I guess, do you want to talk about Shaman King for a little bit? Do Shaman King. It'll be. Okay. It'll probably be quick. I be actually nice didn't watch quick. this, so like you guys can take over. I mean, uh, so with Justin Koo, you guys basically said that this was still following uh, the basically like the previous uh, the, the original, original airings. Okay. Yep. I feel yeah. like some scenes changed a little bit, but it's basically the same premise. It was yeah. basically just introducing like a new person in the. I would assume is in the group because he's in the opening. <laughs> but it was basically just kind of showing like a. Him coming in, uh, thrown in fight, yeah. and then moving on. Um, did this, did this one, did this scene, like, like me, Justin, like we've seen the show, right? Yeah. And I feel like the opening is giving you way too much. Yeah. Like, yeah. Honestly, there's, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if I didn't see the opening, just like the looks of this guy, I would assume like this guy's evil. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like he, he just looks like he, or, or not like a villain. But maybe like an anti-hero or something. All right, something yeah. where like alternative, like kind of like a Vegeta or something. No, yeah, he's yeah. basically he's basically your Vegeta, you know. Okay. Like, oh, he yeah, is. Okay. Yeah. That's, 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 that's do, what I got. You know? That's basically yeah. the feeling that I got. But, he, but even the coup's point further, like there is a lot of stuff that, admittedly, in the original airing, like there are some characters, and not going, you know, too far for spoilers for for new viewers, but it's like there's some characters that you're just like, you shouldn't know about at this yeah. point, and they do have like, you know heavy plot relevance down the road and it's just like well that kind of sucks that 
you know, they ruined that for new viewers. So it's more mm. so just showing that I guess they are really trying to pull on the, the strings of the nostalgia or original series viewers. Yeah. Which is, I think they should have done differently to, to Ku's point to really maximize um, a new breath of fresh air for mm. Shaman King. Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 mean, I still liked it. Like, there was really nothing I had against it. It's very, it's very like a Shonen S. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for uh, sure. Sure. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's I I'm mean, still liking I, I still like the MC a lot. Uh, the little the little guy he basically just reminds me of, like a Pokedex. Or uh <laughs> or or I think it's like, his name's Izzy from from Digimon, where he's basically like, just the oh, go-to okay. guy that just he just yeah, has the book with all the answers with him. Yeah, he's yeah. here to give yeah. more insight and, and be the background narrator to yeah, all the like other the individuals that are participating in the shaman fight can't tournament. It was like like uh, a little bit surprised by where like he was already able to just use a hundred percent. Um, I mean, how they, they talked about it though, like how he was just like uh, they they get their spirit through like either like most likely just like oppression, just basically like uh, in a sense capturing them, uh-huh. and then the uh, the the MC he's he's actually getting it through, like you know uh, befriending him through you know friendship, yep. which is uh, friendship. It's, it's, yeah, and <laughs> it's basically like and it, and it sounds Going like it's something new, finest. yeah, it sounds like something that other shamans don't really do. It sounds like right. he's kind of like a, a different um, kind of like a, a he's an ex- a, a, exception yeah. to the rule, yeah, exception to the rule. And I also like his like little backstory stuff. He just wants to be a shaman king. He's like, oh, man, I'll never have to do anything for the rest of my that's, life. That's <laughs> the deal, bro. That's the, that's what I, I honestly with this guy. That's like the one thing of why I continue want to like potentially recommend this to Sasha, because like, yo, reminds me of Sasha in a lot of ways. <laughs> I'm just God, like super real. chill, laid back, yeah. like individual. And he's just, you know, the type of guy that. <laughs> You wouldn't think can just you know ramp it up to 100 when it really yeah. matters and you know he he does that so yeah uh, i was telling taylor that she, uh, she would actually really like the mc because again like what you said he's very he's about like about the chill as you can get and i found out she doesn't actually like that voice actress who plays him um in most cases so i was uh, like okay well maybe you won't then because that's the uh, voice of him i guess uh, I, 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 I actually like that voice actress i'm sorry Kugo, go ahead no i, I think like if it ever comes out dub, maybe you should just watch it dub because I remember as a kid, like I just loved the voice actor of the original one, like dubbed. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, like yeah. It, it totally matched the guy. You totally got the chill vibes. Uh, but maybe it's because you know most, like most shows are played by like females, like mm-hmm. the Japanese subs, or whatever. Uh, Japanese dub. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I still like definitely. his voice. I mean, I, I like the voice actress. Uh, and. In most uh, situations, I, I think they usually play uh, place her pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really just I like the end of the episode where we finally get introduced to uh, Yo's fiance. And oh, yeah. oh, yeah. the first she is, a, she is an absolute <laughs> badass, oh, God. bro. Like she takes yeah. no shit from anyone. And like <laughs> what you see in that first like initial reaction between um, her and uh, God, like I want to say Morty because I've watched the dub, but uh, Manta. It's, it's Manta. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that is exactly true to her nature. She's just like, <laughs> I give no fucks who you are. Like, yo's my fiance. He's going to become Shaman King. That's, that is what it is. So, oh, she's awesome. Yeah. yeah I, like, like I said, like a little back. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go. No, I just wanted to say, like, I think Anna might have been my first crush and made me who I am today. I was just going like, to say that, man. Gotcha. She's, she was probably definitely up there on a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah. younger, you know, original Aaron crush lists. So. Yeah, girl, you can step on me all you want. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, or you know, move over. We got a new <laughs> BDSM. In the place. Damn right. Oh, God, but, <laughs> yeah, but I still like this. Like, uh, like, like I said, the MC's backstory a little bit. Basically, his... The only like motivation that this man had for becoming Shaman King is just because he knew if he became that, he wouldn't have to work another day in his life. And I thought, like, okay, all right, I can I can give with that with that mindset. Yeah, no, the but... guy just wants to listen to music and vibe, you know. That's, that's yeah, the best thing I would that. say, Shaman King. Shaman King keeps it real simple, which yeah. is nice. It, I'll, it, I'll it, take it. It fits, you know, yeah. the demographic and what they're what they're aiming for. So, and it's all new for me. So it's uh, you never saw it before. So it's just, I'm I'm loving it. Oh, I want to. Awesome. I, need a, I need a better shonen show than uh, than uh, Black Clover, and this this is definitely beat it. You keep saying <laughs> so. that, man, as if that's hard to do. Oh, I know, Ooh. I know. That's but rough. Anyway, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I guess we'll end it there for Shaman King. Move on to our next show. Uh, let's talk about Mango Box, or I guess Nomad Mango Box for a little bit. Yeah. Um. So um, I, yeah, I, so I caught up to. I go ahead, David. First episode. So. 
Okay, um, so well, yeah, let's hear your thoughts because I know me and me and Sretton talked a little bit about it last uh, week because we both saw episode one. Well, I'll say the first thing, like I I still love the animation, like that, uh, like yep. the old school style they're keeping or whatever like, culture they're using. Like I really like the animation, so it has like that film grain esque like attachment yeah. where it's like really gritty, which I think fits. Yeah, you know, oh, to, yeah. To, to yeah. the environment to the series and and then yeah. Yeah. and then like just just seeing Joe, it's just man, feels so bad for him, like. So I'm assuming what happens like he lost his exhibition match against Edison Liu, and he just got depressed or whatever. And that's just what he's been doing the past like I guess five years or whatever. Well, so. I I feel like what probably caused the depression in him to lose is what we don't know about his coach. Uh, like what happened to him? I guess like the coach died um, so and that, stuff. Yeah, so. that's what I was trying to remember. So did the coach not die at the end of season one? No, oh, he didn't. I'm he only, sure he only lost both. He, he lost, he lost both, both his eyes, eyes right? Yep. Okay, I did remember that yep. when he was like in the the back room or whatever when Joe was fighting Yuri. I don't remember yep. him losing his eye at all, but yeah. yeah oh yeah, he, he got yeah. he got stabbed out. He got stabbed out because uh, uh, he got. I think Joe it was, was supposed ba- to fix it, right? Or he... it, there was there something, something of that, that conflict again, where like the coach had basically gone. He told Joe he's going to do one thing, and then he still ended up doing like the other thing or something that didn't kind of align with whatever like mafia group was trying to make you yeah. know, a shit ton of money off the fight. Yeah. And it cost him his eye. Yeah. yeah okay. So now he's fully, fully blind as we saw, I think now in this episode too, yeah. we got that flashback of him visiting his, his coach in the hospital and having now both his eyes gone. Yeah. So, but he, he said that Joel, that the Joe killed him though too. So, and I, I thought we I all thought it was maybe like that disaster. I don't think it's like, I think it's meant more as like, he probably, like he feels like it was feels, him like feels guilt yeah. about something but i don't think he actually put him or whatever. yeah i may more so right. like that that survivor's guilt yeah to that point right. of like we haven't right. seen what truly killed him yeah you know all we saw was joe visiting him in the hospital and then obviously you know something spirals further to lead to the coach's death in one way yeah. or another yeah and then we got to see like a little bit of uh the previous kid too um just like a vision but That's still yeah yeah yeah, Sacha, uh, that's right. I'm surprised. I mean, I know like this whole show is supposed to be about boxing, but I'm still more, I'm more interested in like the lore and like the world. Me like, too. Like, I didn't think I was hundred percent. Like, because they, they don't really explain much of what's happening, and like in this weird, like it's this weird dystopia, but like mm-hmm. they didn't, sh- yeah, like they didn't explain much about like what happened to like the Make Little tournament or whatever, and and then like they're going they're going deep into like the the classified or like. Cause like you have like the the immigrants on living in the the Ben Park, so yeah, that's what I was gonna mention. Cause I couldn't remember like where does the show take place? Is it is it in America technically, or like what know. they've deemed as like a version of America? It's weird I guess it'd be something like that. It's because yeah. because like, wouldn't guess. the original the original anime had like they had a bunch of text in Japanese too, like on the flyers and stuff. So I thought right? it was like some. It's like it's like how like like F seven like you have Midgar. It's supposed to be like amb- ambiguous but like it feels more japanese like the way that it's built but then oh like... yeah i just i just looked it up and it says it takes place in a futuristic japan where yeah, licensed okay. citizens live in a wealthy so city so to japan, david's point but it's like it's like we don't know any japanese person people besides <laughs> like i guess the people living in the high society i guess so like i don't even know yeah, if and it doesn't fit that when we when we focus on all these fighters the fighters themselves are usually from different <laughs> countries yeah. like you know yuri is russian right. and and all these other other guys so yeah um yeah no, it's, but no uh, I, oh, sorry go ahead justin oh i was just gonna say like i totally agree with david's point of like the focus that they did with the um i guess immigrants as as we would kind of call it in the sense of like american focus and things but like right. i guess more so of them being like unlicensed citizens yeah. who are just looking towards you know their own place to call their own that's better than where they were before yeah because the first right. season did that a lot too like they specifically um specifically uh emphasize like citizens like you have to be like a citizen to have an id to enter the megalo box tournament oh right and then joe yeah. has to do like that that underhanded like yeah. service to get like a fake id yeah. to enter into it so oh. Yeah, but I'm I'm very interested. I, I really want to actually see like, well, I want one. I want to know like what actually happened to everybody. It's nice that they actually kind of uh, kicked like a uh, Joe's like reliance on the pills very early. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm glad that they didn't kind of like melt that out because it's like yeah, we kind we kind of get it. And then it's like we only have like 12, 13 episodes, so please we just got to move this. We just got to move on. So I'm glad they actually kind of like got rid of that uh, very early. I'm also really liking the new like I don't know what his name is. I'm just gonna call him. Oh, Chief. Chief. I, I also really like Chief. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm, I, I want to know more like kind of like about his whole story. But do you uh, you think uh, Chief Sun's gonna make it after it, what we saw in the end of this episode? It looked like he told you know the the other now mafia group that you know he had found Gearless Joe, and then when he tries to bring him back, you know Joe's not there. I think, like, I, think gonna, I think Joe's gonna show up anyway, so it probably won't even matter, even though yeah. he's just yeah. a little shit. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can't see them just killing the kid off. But if they do, that would shock the shit out of me. <laughs> so. And then just drive Joe into further <laughs> depression to get him now oh. he killed somebody or, else's. Like, or, or he has to get Chief out of depression now. <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. Sh- like, I, I, I definitely don't think... I don't think Chief's gonna gonna win this fight, you know, you think to get Joe's the money. You think Joe's gonna in for him? In the tournament? That's what I would guess. Oh, yeah. Chief's not going to win. I, I, I can't see him winning it. Yeah, I think it would be too easy and too kind of... I hate to say it, but too happy for this <laughs> show. Like, I, I, the only real happiness that we got from the first season wasn't until, like, the very end. Yeah. When, you know, Joe had finally come, overcome all these things and, you know, pushed against, you know, the ideal society and stuff and won the first uh, Megalo Box tournament. Yeah, and getting that point was pretty depressing and <laughs> pretty intense. Yeah, Hello. I mean, it's just also... Uh, <clears throat> Like bring home the idea of like how dystopian this this feature is for people who yeah. quote, aren't like citizens, quote unquote. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm still hyped for the show. Like I actually didn't think I was gonna be this hyped for the season, but these co- these first few episodes, I thought I thought they were gonna. I really didn't know what they were gonna focus on, but I'm actually kind of excited to see in a sense like this story go. Even though I feel like it's gonna be a lot more depressing before it gets I get, before it actually gets happy. <laughs> the first episode, I was kind of thrown off by the fact that I wasn't so focused on the boxing and also just what happened to yeah. Joe. Like, I was just so thrown off. But I think by now, yeah. the second episode, I think I, I'm really liking how much they're expanding the world and I want to know more, yeah. more about it. So, <clears throat> and I'm glad, like, uh, really? something like this, like, we don't really get stuff like this that often, so I'm going to enjoy it while we still have it. Yeah. Even, like, little bits and pieces, like, I th- like how they're, like, how they're kind of giving us, like, our backstory. They're kind of doing, like, the like the, the like the Joel aspect thing of like a of a Last of Us almost where they have mm-hmm. just like the the person that like where, you know his coach just talking to him when he's not actually there. But I wonder though if he's even going to be there anymore though because he did throw the pills away. So I'm not sure if it was the pills that were causing the him that or if or if Joe's just basically just, having a kind of like survival. PTSD. Okay. Maybe he had that yeah. one because yeah. one of the guys from the boxers had PTSD too from being in the war. So I, that's true. Yeah, it's that's not. True. I might be surprised they put more PTSD in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yep. good. Definitely oh, looking right. forward to more of it. Yeah, and yeah. one thing too is like I, I was looking at the, one of the things, either the beginning or the end. I saw Asha and Joe in like one of the brackets. Like, okay, so it's something to do with it. Is something to do with it? I, I, don't, I just don't know what, but it's in like the title or like the ending. Like they in in the katakana, like oh, Asha no Joe. Okay, I saw it. So Ooh. that's why I keep wondering what, what, what the hell is the connection here. <laughs> so mm. Mm. good to right. have that kind of dangling in the background as something yeah. to. I, I thought. Yeah. I saw, it was something about like maybe a 50th anniversary, but I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's just, maybe. it's always gonna bother me. Like, what's that connection? Maybe we'll see. Or maybe Reddit, maybe Reddit's talking about it too. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe. So that'll be it for Megalobox. Move on to our next show. Um, if, uh, Justin, could you want to talk about I'm a Spider So What? Because it continued from its break. So, yeah. Speaking of spoilers with the opening, so. <laughs> do you still think that Kumiko is the demon lord, uh, or that I don't? Lord? That I don't think it was her. So now uh, I, I'm completely in the mindset that the demon lord is Kumiko. Is it? But she was fighting against herself, <laughs> right? Oh, but I, I might have missed that then. And the uh, I was, I, mean, I was thinking before. I remember when we talked last week, and I thought, yeah. you know, that the spider that got killed was Kumiko. But now, right. you know, in this episode, Kumiko has to fight all her brethren because the mom wanted to return to the cave. And I yeah. saw there was a bunch of other white-looking spiders that looked like the one that Julius killed. Then uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense of why Kumiko should be the demon lord and wasn't, you know, killed by Julius. But okay, now to your point, Ku, you're saying in the opening we see Kumiko fighting this demon lord chick. I don't know if it's Kumiko or not, but it's basically like the drag- the demon lord. She's fighting against like mm-hmm. this white looking spider, and I'm assuming that's that's Kumiko, right? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna have to rewatch I... the opening. <laughs> yeah. So they did. Uh, yeah. I mean, it it was. I'm looking at it right now, but yeah, it's it's basically like Kumiko before she turned into like her her current form, like when mm-hmm. she was like all white and I guess had some pink scarves or whatever. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the opening showed that little bit where she was fighting against the demon lord. And I'm just like. Man, is it really that Kumiko? Like, who else could it be? You know, 
Uh, but yeah, but also to your point, maybe it could just be like another spider that uh, was from the same mother spider that yeah, and just up. evolved to that same level as what we saw. So right. So yeah, oh, fucking man. opener soon. I, I like you want to listen and watch it, but you kind of don't because you don't know how what it's going to spoil. Hopefully, it's a big yeah. debate, and it's not the case. Oh uh, man, now I'm like stuck in my mind of like, oh, do I go back and pay attention? Or now to your point, like, should I just skip the opening so I, I don't have that thought in my head now? But <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, that's that's a way to start the the break, right? Like after a break, new opening, new ending. <laughs> uh, which by the way, I actually like the the opening and the end song a lot better than uh, yeah the first part. So that's Same nice. Here. Uh, did a little upgrade. Um, but yeah, so with with the show. Basically, we kind of just ruined it, but uh, yeah. So Kumiko <laughs> finally left the cave somehow. I, at first, I thought that she was gonna get back, sent back into the cave because you know, like the humans had this barricade around it, and I thought those was a shield that didn't yeah. allow monsters to go through. But no, she just blasted talked. right through it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "That's this is nothing," you know. I defeated the Earth Dragon. Like, what are you guys gonna do, honestly? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and then she's out like roaming about, and then we do confirm that there is a like a humanoid form i guess for for spiders mm -hmm. uh, so she's going to aim to evolve into that so she can go to town or whatnot so like i'm assuming it's still like she's still the demon lord candidate but like like there might now be this, this, here this there. other thought in your head due to you know producers not being able to control themselves and right. show more than they they need to for these yeah. things oh man that is <sighs> Yeah, it's rough. And then, yeah, like the mother spider wants her to come back for some reason, and she sends her army of spiders after her. But uh, you know, Kumiko being OP, she just <laughs> killed them all and uh, ate them. So yeah, fun. Kept on, kept on evolving and, and eating them and everything. And then, mm -hmm. um, I'd say the, the more so than Kumiko's part, um, which I think, like I mentioned, you know, kind of is, is the run for Kumiko. She has a little bit of a comedic focus with now her being outside and, and kind of that aspect and then, you know, fighting yeah. against kind of the, the enemy of the of the week, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but what I really enjoyed was the the human side focus where we got to be introduced to the the elf king, uh, mm -hmm. Potamos, who yeah. I, I definitely didn't expect the elf king to have such like a deep and manly like, yo, guys, I'm a fucking elf king. Like, what's good? I was just <laughs> like, holy shit, like this guy's badass. So uh, I, I really enjoyed their kind of formal meeting of like, hey, guys, mm -hmm. you know, demons are getting out of control. What the hell are we going to do? Um, and uh, then I, I wasn't surprised, you know, when Hugo made his return and and uh, kidnapped the uh, the friend and younger sister of uh, of Shlaine. Um, mm -hmm. And then at the very end, you know, we see Hugo sitting, drinking, drinking some alcohol or whatever. And then Silas, the one, you know, uh, I guess from the beginning, you could tell he was yeah, evil. Yeah, like, it was like a bad egg. Yeah, because yeah. he, he always didn't want to talk about, like, or he was always had, like, a chip on his shoulder with, like, Slain and, and Julius being, like, the heroes versus him and the other brother. So I definitely wasn't surprised there, but it's just like, all right, this this makes sense. Like, of course, he, he's the guy that betrays him and gets Hugo, you know, to, to sneak in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So big plot twist there. Ooh. <laughs> Right, it's like I'll take that plot twist because we can see it coming. But now you know with who is truly this demon lord, you know, spider chick. Then that was the bigger one I was I was interested in. So hopefully there's there's still something bigger at play there that the opening didn't give too much away. Yeah, at this point, like I don't even care about the whole like side story of like, oh, what's the hero going to do now? You know, fuck Julius, fuck Schling. You know, <laughs> I don't care anymore. Who is this demon lord? <laughs> like, right. I gotta have answers. No, I, um, I, I totally agree with you. I'm much more aligned with the evil kind of group or camp in in this regard so right because at the end of the day if if what uh if what was it was it kumiko or was it the the demon lord that said that there was this oh no it was kumiko uh she saw that there was going to be like an ending of the world and they like she had to go out and change it so uh seeing how like the humans are kind of betraying each other uh for like uh their shot at power at the throne it makes sense as to like why you destroy all humans, right? Like maybe humans aren't worth to be saved. So yeah, maybe no, totally. Maybe that's why Kimiko went on to like the the demons or the evil side in a sense. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, I th I think you know that that really nails everything from from this week and and more so to your point. I'm definitely more interested in terms of like the demons background mm -hmm. and lore and kind of why 
because it, it seemed like before the demons were always kind of just like um complacent mm-hmm. with like their place in society and like now what is it that really kind of uh the straw that broke the camel's back that now they're just like all right yeah fuck you guys like you know we're just gonna take over like it's it's been, enough is enough for whatever yeah. happened so yeah definitely yeah, but with how but, many episodes um, we have, we're definitely going to get probably a, a shit ton more characters. So, which I think I know, also right? be, will be nice. 44 episodes. It's it's <laughs> looking to be pretty nice. They're going to wrap yeah. it up well, hopefully. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it's a good way to start off after a break. Um, looking forward to more. Agreed. All right. So, we're at there for I'm a Spider. So, what? Uh, move on to our next show. Um, let's see. Let's oh, let's talk about um, Hige Hero. So I guess I guess the, the, the mm. full title. What's the full title? It's like I shave. I, I got rejected, so I shaved and Brian and run away. I yeah, saw, I, I was gonna, yeah, some some like along that. those lines, you know. The title doesn't make sense. We'll just call it Hige Hero. Hige Hero. Okay. That's yeah, 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 all upon it. Right, makes no sense. <laughs> um, do you uh, do you want to start this one off, Koo? I guess you, I, I, you start, had, you had, I guess you I can good relate inputs. to the guy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so the MC, his name is Yoshida. Uh, we, we start out the show with like him on a date with this really hot girl. It turns out it's his coworker. He's had a crush on her for five years. Uh, he finally got her out to come on a date with him. And it turns out she's, she's seen someone, you know? So, you know, heartbroken, he goes Man. out to drink with his best friend to kind of, you know, just, you know, kind of release his sorrows. Like, <laughs> yeah, his sorrows just vent off, you know? And then... On his way back, uh, he meets this high school girl on the street. Apparently, I think she's in high school still. Um, yeah, she's in high school. And uh, yeah, so she's homeless. And then uh, he takes her back to her uh, his place because she had nowhere else to go. And then this is where, if you watched enough of certain anime series, you would know where this would lead. Uh, but it turns out to be a he turns out to be like a wholesome guy, right? He's not some douchebag who's like takes advantage of her, uh, even though she was more than willing to do what he wanted, you know, yep. in exchange for a place to stay. Uh, but no, he just goes to sleep. It's like, yo, if you want to pay me back, just make me some miso soup, you know, because that's that's all I want. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, he gets it when he wakes up, and turns out he's not a slime ball. He tells her, you know, you gotta you gotta value yourself as a person. You gotta go out and work, and you know, be uh, like a good citizen to society. You know, blah blah blah, all that good stuff, right? And then like, you gotta value yourself as a person. Don't like maybe all the other guys you met before were just like. You know, like just straight up scum. They had like no standards. They were just trash. Uh, and not all guys would like that. So, man, um, it's better than that. Too sick to call it love. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Definitely. So, I, yeah. Actually, it doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, it's it's yeah. not bad at all, to be honest. I, uh, yeah. Even though I'm, I was I was hesitant to watch the show, but I actually did enjoy it the first episode. So, mm-hmm. yeah, right. So, like I said, the the name of the show makes no sense, and I guess. <laughs> They do mention in the show that you know, uh, you know, you should shave because it doesn't look good. Okay, and I'm he also that, mentioned I'll say that one that thing. Guy. This is the one thing about yeah. him being shaved. He barely has any facial hair. Like, how the hell do you call that <laughs> shaving? That's that's messed up. Hey, I mean, but but he shaved. That's he so shaved, little. What the fuck? Like, how do you call it's that? It's different shaving? than clean shaving. It's it's more but than then, zero. <laughs> but so... then he brought a girl home, and then he shaved. It doesn't but, make sense. It's backwards. And, and like you in know, the, the scene, back. in the scene, he has like the full like electric razor too, like the full like mm-hmm. like Gillette like three it's like yeah. three sides like <laughs> full on electric razor for like such a little stubble. <laughs> it's like that's like that's like my facial hair. Like I don't call that shaving. It's like just that's. When he said shave, I, will I, say, I, I thought it was gonna be like, like at least like shaving. scruffy. It's like full, yeah. <laughs> at least a little scruffy. Down on his, like even yeah. the even the like the anime. Like if you look at the <laughs> picture, like there's, it's like little tiny, like little tiny, like 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 facial hair coming out of his face. Yeah, like, just stubble, yeah. just stubble going out. Yeah, a little you know? stubble, a little prepubescent it's thing nothing. going like, on. That's yeah. like, that <laughs> even though this guy's twenty six. Yeah, it's it's nothing. And he says like, oh, you know, you're old and you're too lazy to shave your hair. It's like you don't have any hair, bro. <laughs> No, no, no. I would say yeah, that doesn't make sense. But I will, I will agree though. with what he was saying. Same, I was like, that is a hundred percent sure. I'm just saying it literally. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm too it. lazy for this shit, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but cool. Like you, like see this cool. This style makes sense for you, okay? Like not for this guy. So I'm just saying it literally. Yeah. Oh um, god. No, I, I think Ku synopsis really nailed everything in the first episode, and I think you know it. It definitely was a show that I was glad to watch because I wasn't going to watch it originally because I thought it was going to take that more like sleazy approach Mm -hmm. of just like, okay, now this guy's just going to be creeping on, you know, 
this uh this underage girl and and all mm-hmm. these things um but i was really glad to see that turn of him you know doing that role reversal of like hey you know i know there are a lot of slime bags like that but it's like you should you know really value yourself more and everything and i think what i'm really looking forward for this show is the growth that we're gonna see between not only yoshida but also um sayu the high school girl sayu where um, they're both gonna help each other grow yeah, he okay he, he keeps calling her spoiled or whatever i think he i don't know why he keeps saying that she's more naive than anything not spoiled like she knows like miso soup she can do chores and stuff and she like uh i i, I think it's more because like because she was spoiled and like she was in only like a sheltered environment, that's why she's so naive. I, I think that's maybe that's a word that I would use. Towards. He's more yeah. he's more calling her like really naive due to yeah. her being because given everything the way, in life or like, whatever. I guess like because it sounds like you know like she's a runaway. Like it makes it. I guess I'm thinking that like when he's like he keeps he keeps calling her spoiled, so he probably thinks that she like she like had an argument for parents or whatever. But I think I hope I. I just get this feeling that it's more more serious, like she was like abused or something. So like I get that sort of yeah. feeling, especially if she's willing to like mm-hmm. like sleep with random guys to get like to stay at their place. It feels like that's why like, that's why I keep she doesn't value herself as much. I feel like it's more that story. I feel like that's where it's got head. So that's why I'm, yeah. I'm curious how it's it's gonna lean into or I would definitely hope for that right. because that's obviously gonna be one of the big payoffs is what did drive Sayu to uh you know like, run away from yeah. uh her her hometown and come all the way to to tokyo so that's why I, like, I, 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 what? yeah it sounds like it's been six months too since she's left right uh, yeah so that's the other thing it's like you know damn that's a long ass time and yeah. you know i mean she's if nobody's she's, been she's, looking for her yeah yeah she's, and she's been saying like a bunch of random guys so yeah so that's why like i think like yeah i keep telling her spoiled but it's probably it's, like more naive and i think we're like end up feeling really bad for her when we find out more about her, her backstory. Yeah. So is she yeah. staying at that guy's house then? It's an apartment. Yeah. apartment. Okay. You know, a, a okay. tiny you, Japanese you. apartment. I can barely hey, one person. Sure. Yeah. She was having four. Yeah. It's like a bachelor's studio. Just the, the one room in the kitchen. A Japanese <laughs> studio. So like, <laughs> yeah, even less room than you think. I might, I might check the show, guys. I thought it was going to be a lot, lot. I thought it was going to be a lot worse, you know, just ba- based on the title. Yeah, it very tastefully balances the the etchy so far. So hopefully they they can do right. anything with that. Yeah. So and then well. since it's uh since it's Japanese like Japanese uh, society, right? You know, odds are they'll probably end up together. Who knows? Uh, but probably yeah. will be. I was totally down with either route it took. I just wanted to see what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it definitely so, definitely seemed to pay off. I think. Yeah, but, you know, definitely. It's it's definitely, definitely gonna be one of those gem shows. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least throughout the first episode. So yeah. Mm. So that's gonna be it for um, Hige cool. Hero, and move on to our next show. Uh, let's well, let's talk about um, the Moriarty the Patriots second season. Uh, yes. Yeah. I know, David. We talked a little bit about it, but Taylor, I know we didn't get your input. I think last week's. How have you been enjoying the the new new start of Moriarty for this next part of season? Two? Um, I like the addition of a female character, Irene Adler. I believe her name is. Yep. yep. Um, I think she's in normal Sherlock stuff, isn't she? <laughs> oh, like oh, is outside she? of the anime? I, I have no idea. I, I haven't Sherlock, followed like a lot of Sherlock. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're, so we none of us know anything, and we're the only ones watching <laughs> this. That's great. Um. Yeah, I really liked her inclusion. I was kind of like sitting there, kind of waiting to see like exactly where she was fitting in, what her goals were, things like that. That got pretty cleared up, I think, by the end of the second episode. One thing that kind of threw me off was when they kept on referring to the the crime lord or something uh, like lord that. Of house, well, a lord yeah. of crime. Yeah, lord of crime. And I was like, was that a was that term coined from last season as like you know the mastermind behind the societal revolution of England? yeah i don't remember them ever like really touching upon that i i did they even did moriarty even at one point like coin himself as that he's like oh i'll be so. you know the lord of crime yeah but, i don't re- if it happened i don't remember it so i feel like they didn't like wasn't hammer only, it in super wasn't hard. only irene that said it this episode or someone else say it no, because it was like the game. It was like oh. the premise of the game that they were playing. Um, for yeah, at the masquerade ball. See, I thought yeah. it was more a play mm-hmm. on that, like where she, like, I thought she was like referring to how like 
like she calls him the lord of the crime based on like the game even though no one else knows about it well see that's what i thought but then sherlock was talking near the end trying to figure out who she'd be working with that swayed her from working with sherlock and watson Mm -hmm. and he referred to it as the you know is that term so I was like, okay, Man, I guess yeah. that's what we're going with yeah, then, which I is guess. fine. It's all fine. I it guess. was just a little tiny gripe okay. yeah. where I was like, okay, that's that's the, the name for Moriarty. I, okay, I I had one. The only thing, one thing I'll say, it's like <laughs> when they the secret of like the scandal of the, the British Empire, and they mentioned how, oh, hey, by the way, we got involved in the French Revolution. I'm like, man, that sounds so conspiracy theorist. Like, like some like. If like a British person was this, like, like it'd be like, man, you guys are so you want to be involved in fucking everything, and you want to say you were involved in the French Revolution. Okay, guys. Honestly, it, <laughs> it, it, it makes it makes me think of like Assassin's Creed yeah. type stuff, uh, where you know they're putting in this like more you know like you know, ominous organization that's you know pulling all these strings of like major historical you know, events. Screw the actual history that happened. Here's like the fun, the fun thing. It's just assassins running everything. <laughs> So, that's no. that the part was, I was like, uh, okay, well, I guess it makes for an interesting story, even though like it just it just makes you seem so much more important than you did for mm-hmm. his, See, you know, historical I, fact. I think I'm okay with that. I honestly can't say that it bothers me. I, I don't that's care at all. Like, I know, about, yeah. I mean, I'm interested in history, so just knowing about the French Revolution and stuff. So yeah. I think the fact too of like us not knowing a lot about like the source material for Sherlock that probably oh, yeah. also helps as well because I don't know like how much artistic creativity you know they're taking I mean, with that's... this version of I... Sherlock and Moriarty. Obviously, they're keeping the big themes pretty solidified, but I mean, I'm completely okay with it because I, saying, I don't know any I, better. That's why I keep saying I don't like Sherlock man. It's, it's always Robert Downey Jr. or Benedict Cumberbatch for me. <laughs> so, one thing um, that i'm really not sure about where how they're gonna handle with this show is like it really seems to me like moriarty and sherlock could like agree with each other on values in this show and so i mean they are enemies in other <laughs> in other uh depictions well, sherlock, so yeah, i'm just as the, trying yeah, to figure the, out where they're the gonna hero, so. bump heads here yeah but uh, no i definitely agree to your point like i definitely think once they do have you know that first like true in-person meeting um it is going to kind of be this uh like (laughs) battle of ideologies where they are probably going to realize like how many similarities they do share but just their means of execution to getting to that end result are different Mm -hmm. Um, yeah but no to to taylor's point i i really enjoyed the addition of irene i think you know it it needed another uh female cast member Mm -hmm. to the troop apart from uh you know, the owner of the apartment that they live in that just kind of plays, uh, you know, a very, uh, not Dodgy, special role. Your friend. Yeah, like... I like I, you, so I'm going to be mean to you and pick yeah, on you. <laughs> it just feels very, like, you know, phoned in. It's nothing, you know, special. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Irene definitely has, you know, more of that ominous of, like, wanting to know, like, okay, where did she come from? Why is she doing these things? And now how she's getting kind of mixed up in this larger game at play mm-hmm. um and I, I just love the fact of like sherlock and them in order to find these papers they just decided like oh the most logical thing to do is to blow, blow up the apartment, the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so i i did admittedly find that a bit like overzealous because it's like i have to imagine if an apartment blows up and you know whatever century london like the cops would still show up like asap and they're you know just standing there like nothing's wrong with it they're just like oh yeah we blew up an apartment hey, so we can find these papers prank, and now let us, let us talk to each other exactly ahead of time, exactly so <laughs> just a prank so i know but... um yeah other than that though i i enjoyed uh more focus on albert moriarty because i yeah. i mean don't get me wrong i love william moriarty and then you know his brother that kind of does more of the behind the scenes stuff um, but I, I really enjoy Albert Moriarty as well, because he is really the catalyst that allowed, you know, William to, uh, to kind of do the things that he does at the end of the day. So I'm glad to see they're, they're giving love to, to all the characters. I'm glad to see it, too, because really he made a really big freaking decision at the beginning of season one when he turned his back on and murdered his whole family. I mean, that was commitment. And so I'm glad that we actually get to see him playing a role because he really kind of just took the backstage for the rest of the first season exactly mm-hmm. so yeah i'm liking it it's not always realistic but I, i've always enjoyed no, the I show mean, so i'm really happy to have it back yeah, no, I, I it's fun the show i'm just curious how like yeah how they do like this whole like like arc because it just feels like the way it's gonna end it's just gotta be like like yeah more right over sherlock but it seems like this this part it seems like 
they might end up working together or like just yeah they're gonna end up taking down like whoever i don't know how you take down the british empire but like so i'm curious to see how like their interactions with like this third party will be Mm -hmm. yeah i agree and then i think to i think taylor's point either the last time we talked about not last week but um also just trying to remember more about the the side characters that roll with um moriarty oh yeah you have like like the the one the one colonel and the kid and so Mm -hmm. it's like i want to see you know their exposition as well and kind of you know why they're doing these things um but I don't know, you know, yeah, how do you balance that? Like, are we going to have, you know, more seasons that will give time to that? Or is this season really just going to be the main focus of finally Moriarty and Sherlock meeting mm-hmm. for the first time and having their first true, like, battle? Or I guess, never mind, they didn't meet for the first time. They've already met for the first time, excuse me, because they met on the, uh, train. the, mm-hmm. the train, right? Well, they've, they've met, met multiple they, times. They, they, they met, met on they the, met on the ship. Yeah, they've met, but... The, and then the, the, ship, yeah. was the, the first battle was the train, technically, I guess. But he doesn't know he's, like, the mm-hmm. quote-unquote Lord, Lord of, of Crime. I guess that's yeah. what I was trying mm-hmm. to think of it. <laughs> well, also, there was another character that got introduced this episode, too, which was... Or, wait, sorry. I don't know if it was this episode or last episode, because I wasn't here last week. Mm-hmm. But uh, Sherlock's older brother yeah. got introduced oh, yes. as well as, I guess, a kingpin of the government. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, like, yeah. the head of, like, Secret Service or MI6 or whatever. So, so I mean, that that is what we're supposed to take from him, right? Is that he is probably going to be an antagonist. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would think so. Because he's supposed to be, but like, I guess it comes like smarter than Sherlock. I think like smarter and more abilities mm-hmm. overall. So yeah, he would probably be an antagonist later. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, otherwise, like, it, I don't really have too much else to add. Just looking to see how they're going to unfold this arc. Looking forward to the rest of the season. So we're gonna end it there for more dirty of the Patriots. Uh, move on to our next show. Let's let's talk about Shadow House. It's hopefully because uh, this is by Cloverworks, so hopefully we can have redemption from. This is gonna be their redemption show. Hopefully, I mean they they have the source material to work with, but again, only having you know thirteen episodes could be could be tough. Oh, they do have a source material. This isn't original. This is a manga. No, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess they haven't. I thought it was only 13 episodes, but I was just looking. It looks like they don't have how many episodes it's going to be. Oh, okay. I would just assume 13 episodes because it seems like everything Cloverworks picks up is always, yeah. you know, like a half, <laughs> a half core. Yeah. Um. Well, watching through the first episode, it was I like the fact that it's pretty much giving you information at the same pace as the main character. Um, I like that fact. So you d- you're dropped into the story, but it's not like a ton of information. You're just going to be picking things up slowly. Basically, she's a loving doll attending a shadow girl named Kate and shadow people are a nobility in this world. Mm-hmm. And they do produce soot when they are upset, which I thought was interesting and sounds absolutely miserable to keep up with. Um, other than that, not really like that much information was given to us. Yeah, I think if, if anything, um, to your point, Taylor, you know, they, they establish kind of the world and, and the rankings of these individuals and specifically, you know, the shadow nobles that seem to be held in very high regard. Um the thing that I'm really interested in is one, you know, off the bat, we see that for the shadow nobility, these dolls, as they're calling them, are, you know, perfect replicas of them, of, you know, what they would actually look like when they're not kind of this shadow being. Um, and then furthermore, they kind of hinted at, you know, they, they label them as dolls, but you can pretty much tell, like, they're probably humans because, you know, the, the girl Amilico mentions how like you know she's getting hungry and she didn't eat like a bunch of the biscuit originally because she uh, wanted to save it for the shadow house part. like there's because you see you, like, so? you see dolls a lot in anime as like like um it's like they usually uh God, what that what's that word like humongous whatever it's like they're mm. always like it's always that theme like they they look so human but technically like they're not they're like they're 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 created by like they're created artificially is usually how like okay. the themes go. At least that's how are I are they see normally it. hungry yeah. and other stuff though. Like I thought because that stuck out to me too when she was hungry. I was like, wait. I mean, it, it depends. I mean, if how, anything, how it just seems goes. that these dolls have so many emotions that are you know human esque. I'm taking a guess. Um, like, like from based on other like 
animes I've seen, like, like they try so hard to make them very human. So even like, even like, yeah, making them hungry and like make them emotional. Like, like I can see them being like still like dolls, but maybe the plot just is a human. I wouldn't like. I might yeah. guess like they're more like the dolls side, like where they were yeah. created artificially. Could be. I guess where I'm trying to think of like the reverse is like, I'm trying to think like so far ahead. I guess where it's like as one of the like. Um, plot reveals would be like potentially that they the human counterparts all were like the original royal family and mm-hmm. something occurred that created the shadow shadows counterparts yeah that's kind and it, of it's like some more like thinking. evil okay. like underhanded means that this occurred and now they had to you know fabricate this story <laughs> that oh yeah you know we just have all these doll servants that you know for whatever reason look exactly like us and and whatnot. And I think the other thing that stood out in this episode that was leading me toward that thought was all of the notes on the wall that were in Amiliko's like holding cell where she was like trying to read them. And she was like, oh, you know, I can start to read, you know, parts of these. And I think once she learns how to read more and more from Kate, that's probably going to have more information oh, about okay. like this world. I didn't that think she's about in. that. Yeah, that, that part be interesting to watch. Um. Uh-huh. We'll see. But no, I, yeah. yeah, not there's definitely not enough. And uh, I know before we hopped on the podcast, me and Taylor were even saying like, you know, we, we realized from this first episode that there's like five different, you know, nobles in this family and they're all going to have, you know, these doll counterparts. So we're looking at, you know, at minimum a cast of 10 characters here. Mm-hmm. So and we've only been introduced to two of Kate and Emilico. Yeah. So. Um, I'm excited to see where they go with it, though. I really can't get a feeling for tone from this first episode. Like, I really have, I have no idea what the overall feeling of this yeah. show is going to be. Personally, I, I'm basically I, going in blind, and I got nothing from the first episode. I think it's still, I think it's gonna be more lighthearted with just like more of the, the dark undertones. Like, I don't think mm-hmm. they'll be explicit about it, but I don't know it seems like it's in a lighthearted. Uh, well, at least with the the two main characters, so we'll see. Maybe maybe they'll show more of the family. We'll see, but mm-hmm. it sounds like it's just gonna be the focus on just like the two main characters, like or uh, Emilio is learning how to be more human, and then I guess Kate is like learning how to be less depressed, yeah. not being a shadow. The, the one other thing that I just thought of, and obviously I don't want to go much further here, but um, do you guys remember at the beginning when they're bringing the kids to the like royal house? They make them drink some like liquid oh yeah do you remember that part i, already, not like I was trying to think like is, was that for the remember. dolls or was that potentially that might be why i thought that they were originally human and like to in uh, like what's the word i want to use to like indoct them into this shadow house family those like royals made them drink that concoction which turned them into, turned the, into shadow the shadow beings I don't know. So yeah, not enough. It's it's crazy, and we we just don't have enough. So there's definitely something yeah. deeper at play. Now that I think about it, <laughs> I'm trying to think what what is that drink like? Uh. Yeah. So definitely, I think is a, a show to keep an eye on. And again, hopefully, but, you know, it's it's the redemption for for Cloverworks <laughs> after a, a rough last season. I just kind of feel like um, it's just it's just gonna be more. S- what? what was that, Sarton? Was it Cloverworks' fault though for? Uh... No, but (laughs) you know, and it's it's kind of similar to you know with when we were talking about JC staff and and them kind of getting the the unfortunate works of covering the house husband. So no, nothing against you know Cloverworks, but people can't help but loop in you know bad reputation for shows that of no fault of their own end up being like shout house like very (laughs) cool staff. Because shout house it's being directed by someone like not related to like uh, Promise Neverland or One Direct Priority, so. Ooh, but, okay. But I was gonna say, um, completely I, different. I think this rest. I feel like the first season's gonna be many slice of life, like or just interactions like, between the characters. I don't really see much. Well, actually, maybe maybe we'll see more about the world, but I don't really see too much happening, like in terms of plot. So I could see that. Yeah. Apparently, there's a lot of material from uh from the source material. So the ending sound is really good. Yep, thought, for all thought, the, the thought, sword art fans. Riona. Riona. Yeah, Riona. I thought, was, I thought it was Myth and Roy at first for some reason. It sounded a lot like her. Oh, yeah. Creepy. Kind of similar style. It like, a little bit creepy at the beginning, but when she sings, though, she sounds like Gamer. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that's gonna yeah, be. Yeah, so we will see. Lots yeah. of mystery, a little bit of slice of life, yeah. and again, only thirteen episodes. So that's the big hesitation of like, all right, what can we do with those episodes? Cloverworks, <laughs> make it happen. Yep. So we'll so. see what the season holds for Shadow House. Love you for that. Uh, we'll move on to our next show. Uh, you guys can talk about uh, Mashiro no Ulto. This will be the second episode too, because we talked about the first episode last week. By far, this opening is my my favorite of this season. It's so mm-hmm. Burnout Syndrome is so good. Mm-hmm. They are uh, the best. Oh, so. <laughs> but uh, th- I felt like this episode was way better than the first one. Like they actually uh, had like sp- sp- uh, they targeted a few things. The only part I didn't really care for is like I love like how the the instrument sounds. Uh, sorry, Justin. What's what's the instrument called? Like shash- uh, shamisen. Yeah, shamisen. Um, like I love how that that like how the shamisen sounds, but. I do not like the sound of vocals with her mom or with his mom. I just don't. Wow. Wow. I just, not even not, not because it's, you know, not not because she's a lady. I'm just saying if it was a man, too, I wouldn't like that either. I just like the sound of the instruments. <laughs> I just I just imagine like, you know, when they showed like everybody enthralled by uh, Umiko Setsu's mom's voice. It's trying to be the one person that would just kind of look up in disgust and just like shake his head and like walk by and be like, oh, <laughs> <"That's> shit off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back threaten. I'm going to back threaten on this. I could not do it either. So threaten, it's okay. We can sit there in that crowd yeah. and shake our heads together. It definitely is very, a very, you know, culturalistic thing. Yeah. And at yeah. the end of the day, if you do take it for face value, it is kind of like a, oh, yeah, a wailing of sorts, but a, a different style. <laughs> Of, yeah. if you guys hate opera too, you uncultured swines. <laughs> right, it's it is the same yeah. vein of like an opera esque, but with you know it's yeah. Japanese focus. So. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> the music is always is always a bop and, and banging. So yeah, that was still like the, like the, the just the instrument sounds so good. Um, I, I definitely again like this show is uh, is holding up with like the moms of anime. It's uh two thumbs up. Yeah, uh, she she got yeah, added to some lists for sure. For yeah, sure. she definitely seemed out of place though. From like wh- what we see of the MC, like it does obviously nothing matches. But then again, he hates her. I-, I don't know if we really know why. I don't know if he hates her, but they are fairly distant when it comes to like the mother son relationship. Okay. Yeah, it seemed like for whatever reason, she just kind of dropped the kids off with the grandfather and was like, "All right, I'm gonna go do my, you know, uh... be rich and famous." Be yeah, right back. yeah, I'm just gonna you know start making noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I will say I did absolutely love when um, the two brothers, Setsu and his brother, sitting in the uh, the restaurant, and uh, the the commercial of Umiko comes up on the TV screen. You know, she's acting all sultry and and sexy to sell like this makeup line, and they're just both there, like with their heads just like, oh fuck, oh god. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, his older brother. I like his, I like his older brother. Yeah. He's pretty awesome. He he's like he's not like a dick, he, you know, like to the sense where he's just like, oh, he's always like there to catch up with me. Where he's almost like mm-hmm. in a sense like he's helping him, but but also like uh, um uh oh God, what's the, what's the term? I'm I'm blanking on it. Like uh uh, not, he, he's not making it challenging easy. him. Challenging. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> where he's hard. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, where so like that kind of little backstory with them and them them both playing that song at the beginning of it, I uh, I didn't really like it too much, but then it really, but then it kicked in like a little bit later on, and again, it just sounded so good. Uh, but uh, you know, it it felt like a lot, it was a lot more kind of like focused with just like family. Uh, also, like that that girl that kind of kicked in as well that uh, you know a new challenger has approached, where where she was putting it together like that that um that I'm instrument. Sorry. And then yeah. it's just like, oh, yeah, I just have to get this thing fixed. He's like, yeah, that costs you like 50k. And then just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it, which makes sense because, like, uh, at the time, like, when uh, MC's uh, string broke, and then she just, and then he's just like, oh, I, you know, I didn't have the, like, the money to afford the strings. And I'm thinking, like, the fuck? I was like, well, how much can they, they cost? Maybe 30 bucks at max? I'm assuming if, like, the skin of the instrument costs, like, 50k, I'm I'm assuming that the... the strings are probably up there, probably, you know, just more just than what I... Probably, yeah, 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 different quality and all that stuff. Um, yeah, a little bit more than what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, I think if anything, that one girl who's trying to resurrect the Shamisen group will definitely be a potential you oh, yeah. know, love interest of sorts, maybe. And then it seems like we'll get introduced to more individuals within this school that either play the Shamisen or have some connection there. And then that will kind mm-hmm. of open up Setsu from his shell. Because it seems like, you know, from right now, he's still very reserved and doesn't really want to interact with anybody. He's still trying to figure what he's going to do, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, um, he's going to know. school against his will. <laughs> yeah. The mom's like, hey, you want the, you want this money? You want this cash flow every month? 
yo ass better get to school. <laughs> yeah. uh, to your point, I, I did love when the brother showed up to meet with the principal and like the superintendent and they're just like, Oh, we're so happy. Setsu is coming to school. You know, we really appreciated his mom's, uh, his mom's donation to the school. We couldn't believe, you know, that he was hospitalized for so long. And, you know, just this completely exaggerated story. And the brother just like, you know, starting to sweat and being like, Oh my fucking God. Like, of course, mom would, you know, sell this embellished lie and just throw a bunch of money to fix her problems. Yeah. So that was really great of just building out these characters even further. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad I actually kept with this show and didn't didn't just kind of ax it after the first episode. I'm I'm really liking it. Oh yeah. yeah, I know. Oh, man, the show is a banger. I, 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 have to to real, I have to say, <laughs> I have to just give it. I have to just you know, chill out. I have to give it a little bit more time. <laughs> if if anything, just just put a blindfold on, just listen to the show for like 20 minutes, and <laughs> that's all you need, man. That's listen to the up. opener. Listen to the uh, music that's played out throughout the story, because you know if you're blindfolded, maybe the uh, the music will, will hit you in the fields, right? Maybe well, you too could have envisioned your brothers running across the field, climbing a tree, and then the I, ending. Ooh, the ending was pretty good. Too. Oh, dude, yeah, both the opening and ending. Yes. Great oh, yeah, it's great. And, like, yeah, before, but both of them like they're very, very good. I'm gonna be getting, I will be getting this OST. I'm sure. So this will be like a night, like a night soundtrack. You know, like, right before you you knock out for the night. I'm not sure if you have the OST because I'm sure you might hear Umoko on your on. Some, yeah, I was gonna say you might get you might get some of her, uh, you know, <laughs> praised <laughs> vocal work at you know late in the night, and that may wake you up. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. we'll skip that. we'll skip that song. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I feel like plenty more. But no, definitely, definitely looking forward to more of story development, even though we've already established like music. It's already up there. They yeah, really right. can't fuck that up, it seems. So no. mm-hmm. now it just no. comes down to the, the characters and, and driving their motivations for what they care about. Yeah, I, I think they're actually doing well with the characters. Story is still, eh, I mean, I think they're uh, establishing really? characters. No, it's like story is like, OK. I mean, I mean, obviously, he's just trying to find himself at this point. So, uh-huh. uh, but I think, like uh, I'd rather have like the characters established and then the story, just because you know you get the connection with the characters, so you, then you care about their future, or like the story of their like or their stories in a sense, if that makes sense. Okay, I mean, but yeah. but to your point too, like I feel like this should have been episode one, and then mm-hmm. episode one should be like a like a prologue or something, you know, like episode zero, yeah. just because of the pacing was so much more slower, like the world's being fleshed out more. You get the supporting cast, you kind of get a feel for this. This guy, he's not just some spoiled brat that ran yeah. away from home. Yeah, yeah they, kicked so. out, they kicked out man waifu already. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. like well, you I, there's no, multiple man. I don't know about that. Yeah. Shaku's okay. point, I, I do really agree that this second episode really would have worked better as a first episode because they could have even left it as you know, grandfather dies, Setsu's going off to Tokyo, and then on his way to Tokyo, his mother, you know, like kidnaps him and then now he wakes up in this first episode in this room and he's just like wait what the fuck happened like i was trying to go to tokyo to find my sound and it could have played out the exact same way without yeah. having to do this very like sped yeah. through you know what was the first episode so right. Right. Yeah. yeah man god it's a good show guys this is yes. this is my number one of the season to be honest it's yeah. so good it's, it's it's another show basically i wasn't gonna like i thought it was gonna drop and now it's established too many shows this season. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Be- Anime's getting better and better. Yeah, you. That's all I got. All right. So we're looking at there for Mashiro no Oto. Move on to our next show. Uh, do you want to talk about Bakuten? I forget. Is this is this the gymnastics one? This is the gymnastics. It is. Okay. It is. It is. Gymnastics. Got some nice eye candy for all the ladies. A lot. <laughs> is this... Okay. Is this the one? Well. Is this, very well. Uh, nicely animated too. Or... It is. Very well, yeah, it was very well done. Like honestly, because like, this is another one where it has like the CGI, it has like the CGI stuff with like when they're doing like their routine on like the the the, the mat. Mm-hmm. But it's it's done well. But then they also just switch so well to like to actual animation when they get to like close up to the shots. You, you can basically just see like it actually transitions really well. It's really mm-hmm. fluid. The the music it's it exactly reminds me of the first three seasons of High Q. Like the music was like during that routine was so good. Uh, I'll let you guys continue. Sorry, this is your show, Taylor. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you pretty much covered the things I I would have wanted to say for this episode. I mean, All we right. got to meet we got to meet some of the characters. Basically, um, MC um has a little bit of history with some multiple different sports. Uh, but he happens across this gym gymnastics tournament for some reason, and just and watches this main team and um. 
really just thinks it's beautiful. And they end up um, ha- being kind of low for score because apparently you're supposed to have six people on a team and every person that you're missing, you, I think they mark you down a point and a half, I, th- mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, and so they end up getting a pretty rough score, but if they had six people, they would have been like at the very top of the scoreboard or won that tournament. So they're very, very ta- talented at what they do. So then he goes to that school and decides that he wants to join that team um, along with Kageyama. Or somebody yeah, I was like just going to say, that guy <laughs> reminded me exactly of Kageyama from Haikyuu. And I was like, all right. But the, yeah. I'll, I'll probably enjoy this. Are you guys talking about like, the guy who actually plays his voice, too? Okay. It's it's the yeah, same voice actor. <laughs> oh, is it the same voice actor too? <laughs> I didn't even know that. I just literally saw the guy and like saw his more like you know bullish attitude, and I was like, oh, okay, we got the Kagayama of yeah. this yeah. show now. But he's much more chill though in this one, though. He seems like um, he seems chill. Yeah, he just seems yeah. mellow. True. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where where it really kind of dropped off was just with the team um, doing some basic moves with the new recruits to kind of assess where they're at physically and MC manages to pull off a backflip within the first episode. So we've got the name know. and the, the title yep. there. <laughs> the, but yeah. okay. the only little thing I have about that is because like this guy kind of just jumped into gymnastics and like, obviously they're, they're kind of going to the, the part where he just has like the, like almost like the ability of like the body for it. But that's like, or like a backflip. Like, I feel like there were so many times where like, I like back in my day, where you're trying to back up and you could like could never do it, and that was like forever. I don't know if it's just like the like the mental like uh, like almost like that mental block where it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna fail this. Uh, but it, uh, like it happened like really fast, where it seems like this guy's really getting it. It almost it also feels like it's almost out of nowhere because this guy hasn't done anything with the gymnastics before, and he's with everybody. Who's, I'm assuming has done gymnastics since so, yeah. uh, my life. And this I mean, guy comes guess, from softball background. Yeah, <laughs> or bad, baseball, background. baseball. Well, that's the thing that I guess you could, you know, align to it. Like he's, you know, obviously been involved in in school sports and things for for a good while of how we're introduced to him. So it is, yeah. I agree, a little bit of a stretch. But if they want to just chop it up, it's like, hey, he's athletic. He's just, you know, now applying himself in this different avenue. Yeah, I, Besides, I'm, even just because he can just do a backflip, there's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot of artistry. I was gonna with say it. that's probably there's like square one like of you know <laughs> all the moves that they're gonna be pulling off and everything. So I'm actually I'm uh, I'm excited to actually watch like, a character do who actually grows in the sport and not like skate where Snow immediately was a god. Uh, I would I would um I would rather have like this like see like the actual MC struggle and mm, art instead of just becoming Agreed. a natural talent. Agreed. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that they're not going to go that route. I, I would feel like he's definitely going to be the one to hamper the the group down. I'm I ass- do kind of personally like the fact. I want to see. I agree with you, certain because I want to see the MC have to learn. But I do like the fact that he's joining a team of people who are already fairly proficient because that's one thing I really liked about uh, Yuri on Ice was the fact that it follows people who are already professional, I like I, figure skaters. You know what I mean? So. Sometimes I want to see people grow, and sometimes I just kind of want to see the struggles of people who are already in that field, who are great at what they do, yeah. and how they continue to like improve upon themselves um, in that at that level. So I'm kind of excited for that that yeah. we'll have both those aspects. The, Hopefully so. It, I mean, it is a show again that's only 12 episodes, so yeah. it's finding that balance, right? Yeah. Of okay, you know, where are we get into it's of like personal progression versus team progression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The one thing I, I definitely think it helps though is, uh, is is with coaching, and it seems like with when you have like uh, people who have basically done gymnastics their entire lives, that definitely helps with learning, like the learning curve. Like I, I think it will definitely help speed it up, because um, when you have somebody that actually knows what they're doing and like can actually explain it, like know knows what they're talking about, can definitely help in the learn like the with learning and can help like actually speed up that curve. So yeah. I'm I'm thinking. That could be a part of it as well <laughs> with yeah. the, the backflip and whatever else he has. I to mean, do. at the end of the day, I just want to see more routines because I know what the routines they're going to have, you know, banger soundtracks oh, to yeah. accompany them. So as long as the music- that was the biggest thing for me. I was originally not going to watch the show, gave episode one a shot, love the music, characters are not bad. And yeah. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm in. I'm in. It'll be my guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Animation CGI 2 does everything really well. Yeah. So my husband for to... this show is the blonde guy with the red hair streak, by the way. That's my that's the one I'm looking uh, forward to seeing. But I'm hoping that okay. they all have good team dynamics. Like I hope we get to see some of that 
some of that um, back and forth banter that I really love from Haikyuu. Yeah. I hope they'll have a little bit of that here. I'm interested to see the other teams as well. I know we got introduced, I think, mm-hmm. to like two members from a different team when he was first, you know, watching this group uh, perform after his baseball game. So I'm interested to see the other kind of unique characters that we get from these other ry- rhythmic gymnastic teams. One of those guys was Kageyama, though, um, that joined the team. Oh, right. OK, so then it's the other one who like talked kind of in like nickname cutesy like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. style. So, OK. Yeah. But nonetheless, I'm always excited to see how do you grow the ensemble of characters more because you want to have meaningful rivals or meaningful yeah. competitors that you fight yeah. against. Or that you dance against in this <laughs> regard. <laughs> give me a, give me one more week, and then I'll, I'll come up with my uh, my fa- my favorite character so far. So sounds good. Cool. Or best high candy character, whichever. <laughs> you do you that, sir. Will do. All right. So like that'll be it for Baku Ten. So we're ahead for that. That go and move on to our next show because that's not the only sports show we're talking about. Talk about burning Kabaddi. Oh. And. Someone needs to explain what this is. <laughs> Go ahead, Koo. All right, my man, let me get you educated with some sports, all right? <laughs> We're talking about the one and only Kabaddi, okay? The famous uh, sport, think of it Kabaddi. As, yes, <laughs> think of it as like tag, but for 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 men, right? Men who needs that <laughs> adrenaline rush, all right? You feel me? Think of think of tag mixed with rugby, and this is Kabaddi, but with some slight changes right so uh kabaddi is i think i don't know how many people are on a team but there's there's two sides there's the attacking side and the defender side right the ones who are attacking they're meant to go to the opponent's territory to tag someone and then come back to their territory to their territory safely all while saying the word kabaddi Kabaddi, without taking a breath kabaddi kabaddi right kabaddi kabaddi Right, so no ASMR here, but if you want to hear it, you could definitely go check out the show, and uh, that's basically what Kabaddi is in uh, in layman terms. Uh, again, not much has been talked about with like rules and regulations yet because uh, the first two episodes have been just about recruiting this soccer genius who quit uh, soccer, even though he was like at this national level. But due to some conflict with like his uh, teammates and a coach, he just gave up on sports in general. And he was and wanting then, to become a live streamer. Yes, and he wanted to become a live streamer because that's that is the way to that's go. That's what the kids apparently. see. Honestly, it's that's like, the dream, baby. Exactly. They don't want to be. Yep. They yeah. don't want to be uh, celebrities. They just want to be YouTubers, basically. Yeah. Fucking fucking yeah. nine to five. The day of the salary man. No more. Yeah. Dude, should, that's what I'm saying. We should also mention yeah. K- Kabaddi. Apparently, it's like popular. In, it's like an Indian sport, and it was popular in India. So. I have no idea why. Oh, okay. This is like, I know that. For, uh, for giving us that. Yeah, I, over I, I to used, the, the Japanese used, focus. Yeah, I used to yeah. about that, but I don't know why this is like being made in an anime of all things. Hey, Dude, man. If it's a sport, you can make an anime out of it. Right? There's animes about rugby, the I mean, gymnastics, skateboarding, I mean, whatever, you know. Hey man, it one of the best be sports animes is, is ping pong the animation. Ping pong Never the anime. Did I think that <laughs> you can make There you go. You can make ping pong so epic and there it is. It's only, it's just, that's why it's a shame that we only have one American football anime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, not, not much has been talked about the show, uh, like the the sport in itself, because it's more about setting up the character and the supporting cast. And uh, apparently, there's five people right now, and they have the captain, so that makes six. But he's been hospitalized, and he should should be coming back soon. But they still need a couple more people to uh, to make a full team, right? And uh, they're still going to try to set up their team um, and hopefully they get to talking about how the game is actually played because it is based on a point system. And then after so many rounds of going back and forth, uh, that's when the game ends. And of course, if you get the most points, you win. So uh, that is Kabaddi in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the supporting cast, I think, is really strong, actually. Uh, so far, I like all the characters. Is the animation as good as Bakuten? No. no. Okay. Uh, uh, I haven't no. watched Bakuten yet, so, but uh, yeah, no, absolutely no. It's not even close. The one okay. I, I was talking, I was talking with Ayush, you know, through the, the the YouTube comments, and the, the one thing he was actually worried about before I, I watched it was the animation, just because he uh-huh. was saying that the the sport is actually a lot of like, uh, um, it's it's supposed to be like really quick, like really fast paced. 
Mm-hmm. But but then of course watching the first episode, you just get the feeling with like the animation studio. It's like oh god, they, they're not going to be able to do it. Like you just get the feeling with like their their style of animation. It's not going to be able to do it. But then I thought that uh, they may uh, take more of like the tactical route where they basically make it like a mind game in a sense, which they they've had been doing that, especially right. like the second episode where it's like the you know, the MC has like all these thoughts going through his head. The opposing uh, the opposing per- or the person that's a uh, I forgot like which which way is which so far. The defender. The defender, yeah. Where they go through the defender as well, and then they're kind of going through like the the the, the tactical stuff like through the minds, and then just kind of giving their like giving um giving us their thoughts, mm-hmm. which I I feel like works much better when you know like your your animation is not going to be able to reach that or get to that point where uh, with like like how quick like Ayush was making like the sport like how it makes it sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I actually think like like how they're doing it is is really well done so far. It's a yeah. uh, yeah, it, it's honestly like I, I'm like it's, I don't know if it's because of the cast or like I'm actually this is like one of like the the shows I'm more, like more interested in as well. All characters are likable. It's it just seemed even though the one thing kind of kind of kept throwing me off is like these guys are in high school and there's a bald guy, <laughs> or I shouldn't say bald but shaved head. Hey, yeah, which, please, please which, shave it's a life choice. It's a life choice. Okay, but I'm saying that, but he's my favorite character. <laughs> So, dude, I mean, like, this, guy, got a girlfriend this, guy is, <laughs> this guy is so hyped up and positive, dude. That whole little back, like little whole, whole little back and forth about how, like, yeah. I don't know what he has against this man, but he's he just chose him as like the guy he's gonna like he's gonna fight against. I mean, we got, just... we got Tanaka and IQ. I don't know why he's crushing the man. No, no, no. You you, you don't um, understand, all right? That's just how it is. If you see someone shorter than you, who's bald, who's like a loud, more ripped, as annoying well. <laughs> guy, yeah, and Damn he's you, like, Peter. Damn you, you in every possible, and he wow. has a girlfriend, dude. You cannot let that go, all right? You gotta prove your dominance somehow, wow. okay? And the fact that he has a really hot girlfriend overseas, and he's way better than you in these, like these, uh, in, in the sport or whatever, man. Like, what, what do you have going for yourself, sir? Dude, yeah. but that bro moment though, where he backed him up at that place, it's like he's like, yeah, come over here. Can you can you lift this thing moment. real quick to to basically like because he and it just destroyed that those two guys with like how much mm-hmm. they were able to like uh to, I don't know if it was like deadlift or whatever he was like pulling, right. and then he's just like, oh yeah, we're gonna do like a little competition. He's like, I'm gonna have to you, you're gonna have to do this for me, and then yeah. just two hundred something and just destroys the other two guys. And he just walks away. He's like, he's like, hey, I thought this was a competition. <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, 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 you did your job. <laughs> Yeah, like that, that whole like little bro ma- uh, like moment was actually really good. Kind of like backed him up, and then, but uh, it I don't know, like just the character dynamics. A lot of those things it reminds me of Haikyuu, um, where you just kind of where the, you just got to like know the characters. It was just just dumb comedy, but it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, always just, nice to have a good variety of oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. So, definitely. Oh yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 gonna I'm I'm actually really looking forward to the show. But what do you guys think about the humor? Things? I, I like the humor though. Great. I like the, I like yeah. the humor so far. Yeah. Yep. You don't? No, I do. I do. I just okay. don't know. Okay. If, I, I didn't know this was your cup of tea because, like I said, I kind of have a lame sense of humor. Uh, I kind of I, I tend Normally to think that a lot too. of things are funny. Uh, but I mean, I, I thought like all the humor, all the jokes made in this episode and last episode, I thought like they're pretty funny. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, everything. Like I, I still like love it too. Where like he just like randomly just just like chooses this guy as like the uh, uh, like the challenger. With, with with being the bald guy and he's oh. just like in his own mind he has like all these things and the guy has no clue what's happening he's just kind of going with it mm-hmm. <laughs> so i, I really, really like love, that kind um, of stuff so i really Justin, love the like vice captain or what what do you call like the the person who's one step lower than a captain wasn't it be just vice captain Is Is it? we'll just okay. go vice captain yeah. we'll just do vice captain yeah yeah, yeah. Right. yeah i really like that guy like i grew an appreciation for characters like that i watched this show this anime called run with the wind which was about running and that was oh, I don't yeah. know. not a phenomenal yeah. show it is. Yep, I love sure. that one. And he get a, kind of get a tissue of... with you because you will you will cry. Yes, Promise. you will cry over running. Oh, it's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, he kind of reminds me of like Haiji from uh, Run with the Wind, where he's like, "You're gonna do this. You're not gonna okay. have a choice." Like I like that yeah, kind of. Okay, I might moment. have to check that show then. Mm-hmm. You yeah. might actually. I, I think you'll like it, Justin. It's okay. like it does everything really well. If you like, the only thing, like oh, I said, like the animation is not going to match up to the list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, animation will not match up to the first three seasons of Haiku. But like just like the like the like the character dynamics, everything it, it definitely gives me like a high Q vibes, awesome. and it's 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 actually just really it's really fun to watch. It's good. You'll you'll, you'll have a good time. You'll have a good oh, time yeah. for sure. Yeah, Dave, if you feel like checking something out too, if you have free time, go I for it. I feel like this. I'm interested more in this than gymnastics, honestly. So. Yeah, you'd like this more than the gymnastics one. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. 
Yeah, so we're gonna edit there for burning the body. I learned something, learned a new sport today, so that's interesting. Here, academia. Okay. Yeah, look who showed up. Hello, Hello. good sir. What's up, Brian? Hello. Hello. I'll Hello. Hype Hello. I'll hype you for this fight, Brian, between class A and class B. Man, class B about to get clapped. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, I actually I don't I yeah. barely remember the the purple hair guy Shinzo the uh never ever forget him because of Taylor continue because <laughs> I couldn't shut the fuck up about him <laughs> no okay yeah. he was basically like from the first tournament arc Deku had to go up against him and he uh -huh. has that brain control power which is yeah. really sucky for him because it's such a villainy sounding power everybody's mm -hmm. terrified of him but he wants to be a hero and so. I just remember thinking his interactions with Deku just felt very meaningful. I really felt for this guy, like, 100%. I understood where his headspace was. I was, like, rooting for him when they were going up against each other. And I just remember thinking, he could be actually a really interesting character. That's a pretty convenient quirk to have. And then you just never fucking hear about him again for seasons. And I'm just yeah. sitting here waiting for the day when this guy <laughs> shows up again. To be and fair, like, here. <sighs> like, hit, like the way what he's turned his quirk into it, it's pretty sick. Um, oh, yeah. he's, also, just, he's just an awesome character. He, that's, this is, oh, he's, he's he's actually really cool. And I, I figured he was actually like uh, Aizawa took him under his wing just because again of the promo art, the opening <laughs> where he has the 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 same like uh, cloth the as like the Aizawa, bandages, uses. Yeah, like yeah, the bandages. Yeah. Yep. So I figured it's like okay, well at some point. But the one thing that actually I didn't uh, actually see coming where I didn't know you could actually uh transfer to like the hero course in a sense so like when i heard that where he was actually wanting to i thought it was just like a where it was basically one of those just class battles again and that they're just yeah. going to inevitably lose but then when we find out he actually you know he was able to be like a special guest and wanted to become um actually transfer into the hero the of uh, the uh the hero class i was like oh damn i was like okay this is this is a little bit more interesting also for some reason law it's just kind of like a stupid like just a stupid thing but i love to see like the teams that they make, like just to see like what the like the, the team compilations are that they just randomly randomly choose, just yeah. to kind of just to kind of see uh, what team what team was it Taylor that I mentioned? And I was like, oh man, that team sucks. Was that Deku's team? <laughs> yeah, Deku. Is okay, with, uh, <laughs> Unodaka and Minata. And Minata. Okay, okay that, oh, that's God. where he went. <laughs> okay. I have oh, it. God. I have it basically pulled up right now. I'll take a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just like watching that happen. Just like what the team comps are. It's, it's like you have the most OP character. And you have to add a person like Minata to your team. So yep. I and guess now it's they've, got, it somewhere. they've got Ashido yep. too. So it's Ashido, Minata, Uraraka, and Deku. Mm -hmm. They're already yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, whatever. <laughs> so, Dude, that team uh, just sounds like they're going to prevail off of friendship and love. <laughs> AKA <laughs> right. Deku. You should have this. It's going to be great. Dude. Welcome to the watching world again. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> Fun fact: The bandages were against his will. Just, just so you know that. Oh, oh so yeah. there's more, okay. more of a bonded relationship between Aizawa and Shinzo. Ah, Makes sense. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, Physically okay, okay, and literally guys. speaking. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was uh, our more so. Keep it PG. Is Aizawa being like, "Don't ever talk to me or my son ever again." <laughs> That's the relationship yeah. they have. Yeah, I got like really hard like father son vibes there. It's like. <laughs> This kid mm. is like the long lost child of this man. And yeah. he it's pretty much what uh, All Might to Deku is, but from a different kind of perspective. Yeah, yeah I can see yes. that. In terms of mentor mentee. Yeah. Well, Aizawa, he used to tell, you know, his kid, he's like, hey, I just want to talk. And then he wrapped bandages really tightly around <laughs> his eyes. It was bad. I just imagine, like, as I was household, it's like one of those kids, like, running away, and his bandage just comes flying out of, like, one of the rooms, straps to his leg, and the kid's like, no! Just drags him by his foot. I can do. God damn it, Sasha. Why you gotta put these yeah, things in my head, man? He's gonna get some oh, eyes out. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, how'd how this guy get in here? <laughs> but no, nah, man, if the author ever needs any side stories, bro, it sounds like you you got him covered. For at once, oh, yeah. my hero is all said and done. Oh, the ace. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. But no, um, to to start and you guys' point, like I, I'm excited to see the different team comps because you know I think admittedly with my hero sometimes you get used to you know the the Deku, the Bakugo, the Todoroki when there's three are kind of like always coming together and teaming up and really like my hero does shine when you get to see these auxiliary characters from the hero course you know come together in different variations and really make their quirks stand out. Um, cause I think if they didn't do that, then yeah, it would just be, oh, you know, Deku's going to save the day with his OP quirk or Bakugo is going to save the day with his OP quirk and things like that. I don't know. What do you think of that first fight we had for teams? 
Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, you. Because it, it was just basically showing. Uh, I already blanked his name. Shinzo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shinzo. Uh, no, Shinzo, Shinzo's ability. Because I think yeah. that's basically what like the, the only point of like what we saw so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, honestly. That beast guy's power, it's like, okay, great, he rampages. Dude, that guy just reminds me of Beast from X-Men. Yep. It's like, okay, cool, you're a beast. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah, basically when they, he showed up, you know, he did the shonen thing that just explained his ability or his a, power. That's like the one that really bothered me this episode, just the whole, like, they spent, they spent a long time, like, explaining. I know, like, they're in a classroom setting, but still, it was a while of him talking about how oh, we, we need. We he was just giving all everything. that exposition of yeah. like, wait, there's 42 people, but we can only have four per team. How does that work? And it's like, <laughs> oh, here's how it will work. So, yeah, to your point, he just served his purpose of exposition. Yeah, it was basically that. I mean, I still really like Denki. I like Kirishima as well. They're both, you know, there for comedy. And I also think they have some pretty, they have some pretty cool abilities. Uh, who is their other member? I'm blanking. Oh, uh, the two. Sue, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So to be fair, like we didn't really get too much of the first fight yet, but I think just just like uh, showing Shinzo's ability, where he he's able to like in a sense like mimic other people's like voices, so they respond to him. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still kind of interested to see like how he uses Aizawa's like things because Shinzo doesn't seem like the fighting type really, unless I mean I'm assuming like since the last time we saw him, a lot of time has gone by, so I'm I'm sure he could have. Uh, and it also, with I'm assuming with Aizawa's tra- type of training, could easily be catching up uh, a little bit with uh, some combat abilities or hand to hand. I feel like in itself, he's too strong. There's no way that they can defeat him unless they cover their ears or something like that. I guess. But... No, don't say anything. It's basically once they like once they actually like talk back to the guy or like um, respond in any sort of way, then I think that's basically when they get caught. But all right, I, yeah, I guess that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know though, like, because you know, we, he's able to, like, in a way, like, mimic um, how they, you know, so they, they respond to him. But mm-hmm. I'm wondering if there's something more to his abilities mm-hmm. uh, just that, because it's just like, it, you know, he can kind of like take the take over them in a sense or take control. But how we saw through Deku, Deku can, like, he, like, in a way, they can still get over, they, they still overpower it. Mm-hmm. But then again, Deku has you know the, the nine like armor. predecessors of so, All Might yeah. pushing him past. Yeah, yeah he basically has like all a all for one. one. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he basically has the All for One. He has all the stuff. So he, he has like all that kind of going for him. So that could be just you know just uh that could be a part of that as well. Right, but but again, with the whole his ability is is so overpowered that the only way to beat it is plot armor, right? So yeah. I seriously doubt that they're gonna lose, even though they already captured or knocked out two of the teams team members. So. Yeah, but no, it's um, it's I I don't know. For, I've always liked Hero Academia, but they're just they're just like these uh these tournaments in a sense. I don't know why. Like I I don't know if like Bo- I'm I think Bones also makes it look more enjoyable just because animation with animation just makes it look just awesome. Uh, I never my my least favorite part so far of this show has actually been like the League of Villains because I think they're just trash. Besides Dobby, uh, Dobby's the only one I have any interest in. That's that's interesting um, you say that because I'm like opposite of you, Strand. I don't really care about tournaments, but I want to see more League of Villains because it's like like the actual story of the show. So does anybody actually like the League of Villains? Does anybody think they can like stand a chance I mean, at this they're point? Like, they're like the only like thing hap- like happening in the show. So I I need like yeah, but barely. Like it's like they're just they just I don't know they just blow. I feel like they've served as a better purpose as a villain rather than like Chisaki or the gentle criminal. Like, oh, for, criminal. As, for, as for villains, they're the best ones that my hero has to offer currently. So we'll just leave it at that, to be to honest. Be fair, to be fair, like, that's not saying much. That's not saying much. <laughs> you know, overhaul was its own separate thing. I, they could have done Overhaul, I think, so much better because, like, Overhaul in itself as a character was so. It, it, it just seems so awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they just kind of. You know, it just went out with a whimper, and hey, we what it kind of should have, you know. So. Exactly. And now we're focused on like the League of Villains. I'm thinking, motherfucker, I hate these guys. Uh, it, it's I don't know. It, even though Endeavor's like little story, kind of like back, like uh, I thought it was also really good with him, just kind of um, him having kind of like his redemption arc in a sense. For some people, mm-hmm. I don't care. Doesn't care about him. Um, I'm not saying I don't care. About him. I'm just saying he just he spent know. he spent years yes, David. traumatizing his family. You gotta do more than just an apology. All right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, it's, uh, but, but he's trying to do more. Yeah, not yeah. everyone can be like. Yeah, he's always right? trying. It takes some time, you know. Yeah, but but like him, like 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 Endeavor's little arc from like end of last season, I thought was really good. Like the introduction of Hawks, 
just with his character as well. I, 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 no, no, no. But none of them with League of Villains. I think League of Villains is by far the worst thing. They just keep throwing Nomos out. I mean, I don't fucking care about the Nomos. You they're know, evolving, bro. Come on, yeah, they're, just, they're just, just time, man. God, they're, they're just terrible. It's just like basically just throwing like advanced putty from Power Rangers. <laughs> give me Whoa, yes. put some respect on those putties, Dave, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, yeah, not even, right. I'm not even watching this, <laughs> but this sounds terrible already. <laughs> the fact that we're debating whether or not the League of Shadows are a good cast of villains, yeah, that tells me everything I need to know about this show right now. They're not in this right now, so that's why I, th- I feel like it's better because they're it's currently just like the it's just like the Shonen tournament arc. Um, just, just don't listen to Sred, he's just ranting about the League of Villains for some reason. They're not even in this episode, yeah, in this episode. <laughs> like, I don't know why he's ranting about it. Yeah. I mean, they think at the end of the day. <laughs> You want to have that balance where, you know, <laughs> there needs to be progression from both sides. And obviously, yeah. from what we've seen, it seems like it's really going to focus on, you know, class 1A versus class 1B. But I do agree with David's point is, as we know right now, the, you know, League of Villains are the only main entity. So hopefully, you know, we get to see more snippets of Hawk's involvement on his kind of, you know, double agent mission. Uh, hopefully some more with uh, Endeavor and him trying to uh, resolve all the shit he's put his family through and then see what yeah. the league of villains are up to. Um, yeah. And having that balance be done well is probably what's going to make people like this season more. Cause I think if the whole season is just like, all right, round one of one, a first one B. Okay. Have, this takes two episodes. Like, round two. Yeah. We have, round we have so three, many teams like, of like, yeah, like, like was it teams of four or whatever? That's so many people to go, to go through. So like, I boring. really hope this doesn't take like too long. I want to like, like let's get through. I know Strand. Yeah, done that. I know Strand doesn't doesn't like League of Legends, but like I need I need the plot. Like just please like get out of school. I, th- I think that's a part of it. Like what with the League of Villains is because like it's multiple. It's been multiple seasons now where they've been kind of like Mia. Because like the last season was um, Overhaul and Gentle Criminal. We really yeah. saw nothing about League of Villains until at the end where they basically just took away uh, Overhaul's hands and then they just moved on. And then that's all we saw. And and then yeah, that, but, and so. But- I don't want to like, see the school stuff, so... Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like, well, I guess we, what how like, what Justin was saying, like, would you agree, like, they haven't really been showing the League of Villains, I guess? No. Uh, or, like... like they haven't made any progression. They've, they've shown Dobby here and there. That's about it. Yeah. But well, that's, I'm to be saying, fair, you have to... Uh... No, go ahead, David. Uh, no, I'm just going to reiterate, like, I still would rather see them in the, the school stuff. Uh, I mean, I would rather see them in a sense, like, showing, like, I don't know. Well, I, don't, I really don't know. Well, there there has to be a balance, right? You can't just have a show about just kids going to school and learning how to be superheroes if there's no villains for them to fight. Otherwise, what's the point of the show? It right? just becomes one big there has to be, then. Yeah. yeah. Right. There there has to be progression. And you know, in the very first episode of this season, they did show that, hey, you know, like behind the scenes, the League of Villains has been working on something. And you know, Hawks is infiltrating them. They're working on this like super nomu, uh, like a bunch of them. Uh, and you know, as you saw, Endeavor barely was able to take out one of these super nomus. So uh, you know, keep out for that. This stuff is gonna be a big thing later on. So now that we got that set, right? Like the premise of the villains of what they're doing, hey, let's focus on the heroes now and then see how they've been progressing. Because if Endeavor couldn't take care of one or barely could, like what are a bunch of kids gonna do? So yeah. you, know, you gotta have that balance, you know. So, I think to be fair. I think you did a good job of like explaining that. Can I just say something really quick, Sretton? Mm-hmm. Sure. I think a big part with the uh, my issue with the League of Villains for a long time was that I feel like they would just kind of bring them out when it was convenient for them to be part of the plot line without really like giving them any motivations that we really necessarily understood as an audience for a very long time. Even now, like, I don't know why, why, why half of them are doing what they're doing. I don't understand why Toga exists. Like, I don't, (laughs) I just, I just, I feel like it's kind of messy the way that they've Mm -hmm. been involved in the plot up until this point. So now um, with Endeavor coming in as the number one hero, we're starting to see, like, to Koo's point, we're starting to, they're kind of emphasizing where the League of Villains is going. So you at least have in the back of your head, okay, here's some of the moves they're doing. And I think now they're going to be focusing in again, reigning in on class 1A and B. And then finally we're going to get that bigger narrative of the League of Villains, I think is what's going to happen. And it's just been messy up until this point. I think that's really like the big problem. To to be fair for both sides, like I I get like both, like, you know, like uh, Heroes lost All Might and then the other side they lost, uh, was it All for I'm blanking on One for All? Or is it All for One? No, All for One. 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 Okay, All for One. I get like both sides are basically, they lost like their epitome of like good and evil. 
So it's like they're both kind of like reeling of like what to do. I think that's also why like Hero struggled last season is because because uh, we knew All-, All Might is like that just strong character. And then once they lost them, then basically all we have is like you know Deku and like Endeavor as like a as like the main like strongest heroes now. Mm-hmm. So it's just like oh man, we have to go to this. <laughs> so, and then uh, I get with like uh, with the villains like because like he was the one that basically gave everybody like their quirks. He was able to like you know splice things up. And then like he's gone or he's not gone, but he's not he was it in jail, prison, whatever. He's, yeah, he's in lockdown. So yep. it's like it's more like just kind of I think both sides are just trying to find the footing. And I'm just trying to find like the story in that sense. That's how I f- feel it as. But yeah, yeah. And, and they're getting they're getting there. I feel like they're yeah. they're starting off fairly well, you know. Oh, and yeah. then I, you know, villains shouldn't be on the limelight either. If you're a good villain, you should be like operating in the shadows, not letting everyone know your business. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still gonna watch the show to the end, just because I actually do like here. Like, I like their characters, everything. I'm like essing on the show now, but it's like I want it to be Ooh. better. Fuck you. <laughs> so, no. I, think I agree I, with Sasha 100%. You know, <laughs> boo. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, what were you going to say, what were you gonna say, David? No, I was going to wrap it up there. Oh, okay. But Ku yeah. won up me, so that's the better wrap up. So I was going to say, it's like, you got to get your mindset back into, though, of like, this is a very long running series. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. is, you know, that's it's shown in. I so remember that, yeah. It is something that when you're juggling it with, you know, the shorter shows, like those are obviously going to move plot at the quicker pace. And with Shonen's, you know, they move yeah. at a more steady progression. And I it's like having, myself that. having yeah. that, that, that switch back and forth of like, hey. Maybe not as much as is going to happen in, you know, episode each week with the Shonen versus other stuff. So. That's why like, I'm right, saving right. most of my thoughts, like, till after all this, like, the, the school stuff. Probably a good move. I don't really think <laughs> so. I have much to add for these episodes, so. Yeah, so I'm going to yeah. wrap it up there. Good move, so. good move. Wish I, wish I wrapped up with the Ku's last word, but we'll leave it for there. <laughs> so that'll be it for My Hero Academia, and then move on to our next show. Let's talk about Tokyo Revengers. Oof. Because I'm, sure. I'm getting seriously like, race vibes from the show. I was shocked, Sha- Sasha, you were actually going to watch. I'm actually more shocked you enjoyed this show. Hey, Dude. what can I say? It was, it was, mm. I thought it was a really strong episode. And I don't really watch this genre too much. But going back, you know, seeing someone, you know, Isekai, right? Isn't that the genre? No. no? Yeah. Cool. yeah. No, not Isekai, isekai in a normal yeah. regard. I, I or... thought this was Isekai. How dare you? But dude, yeah. that's what Threat texted me. So that's what I just went with. Because I, I, really? I said like, no, I, I said that because like I when I went into the show, I didn't read uh, anything about it. I didn't read the synopsis. I thought uh, it was an Isekai well, until guy, what happened. He did almost yeah. die. Oh, he technically died, but yeah, he didn't get reincarnated into another world though. He just yeah, is, yeah like an Isekai bait that ends up just being time travel. But it's time more, leap, but it's more like a race though. So yeah, yeah. I never but, saw it. Uh, yeah, but... Stratton, I don't think... Sasha, you haven't watched the race, right? No. Okay. Nope. So completely f- fair, then, okay. in terms of your original classifications. Yeah. But anyways, getting into the, the meat of the first episode, what do you, what do you think of uh, our main protagonist here, Takamichi? You vibing with him? You haven't seen enough yet? What do you, what do you think about his, he did, okay, his so... current life and his flashback to what he was the... doing in his middle school days <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a delinquent? <laughs> uh, the first half, like, I didn't really, he didn't really leave a strong impression on me. But I think by the end, okay. like, I'm starting to vibe with him more. I, like, I'm sorry to, um, like, root for him, I guess. Like, I, I totally understand. Um, like, I, I, I totally, like, I don't know, like... Like I get, his, I get more of his character after that ending. Whereas I feel like the first half is just his him like trying, like he kept thinking it was all a dream, and so and he just kind of like had like this this vibe of like he like you know he kept saying he wasn't confident in himself. So like it was, I was like not really connecting with him much. But then like yeah, by the end like I started rooting for more. Like I said, I like, for like a good chunk of it, I was kind of like lost at first. Like when he got when they first showed him like. In that earlier, his like you know, was it the younger form or middle school form? I just I just thought he would just got kind of, kind of into like another world or, or like a different timeline in a sense. And then you find find out like no, these are his his these are the, his friends when he was growing up. This is what he looked like when he was growing up. I also just like the little parts where he's just like, oh man, he's like, I look like a I just look like a complete douche when I was in middle school. But <laughs> well, I feel like, all, look, like all of us can. I think everybody can relate in this in like that sense where it's just like when you look back at your middle self, I was like, man, I was terrible. 
Indeed. Nah, the only thing I hated when I was a kid was just my bowl cut, bro. Everything else was on point. All right? oh, okay. Well, that's, well, my bad. My yeah, bad. Yep. You know, it's, so I, like that little like that stuff was really really good because at the at the whole time like I was just trying to figure like what the sh- like really like what the show was just because I going into this like I didn't look at the synopsis at all, which I think like why I enjoyed the first episode even more, just because I didn't actually see it coming. Like when um, because when they went back like when they did that that whole kind of like the. The only uh, another thing that I, I kind of thought was when he had like the like the memories of like those people who, um, oh god, what was the gang? The gang's name? Like their Tokyo Manji. Manji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. When they got introduced, where he's just he's trying to like like pick up the pieces to that time. I, was, I, I I kept feeling like, man, I think you would remember this in life. Like it seemed like it was a pretty traumatic experience, where uh, it, where he didn't like really see it coming. What were you guys' thoughts? Uh, I thought it was well, fair play. You did, okay. yeah. That thought was pretty fair, right? Because uh, from I was gonna say, I think what he was doing was he was just in shock at the fact that he's back. So I could see him forgetting that moment because okay. he had that terrible haircut, that hairstyle, and then all his <laughs> friends. He's like, "Oh yeah, this guy's wearing glasses <laughs> just to look smart." <laughs> so there really was no <laughs> actual, you know, practical purpose to the glasses. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's even to your point too of him not remembering all of the events because you know, remember when he's rolling with his buddies to go you know, beat up on the other, you know, second years of this other school. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're good. Like, we've talked to my cousin who, like, runs shit at that school. So nobody's going to fuck with us. And then, you know, the third years show up and they're just like, hey, punks, what the hell are you doing here? Like, the second years are on a field trip. And then as they're going through those events, Takamichi remembers what actually happens. And he's like, oh, yeah, my cousin was nothing more than, like, this gang's bitch and just got them drinks and stuff. And then they get the absolute shit beaten out of them. No. Yeah. So... Feels bad. I've uncovered something. Typically, this is the 80% rule. When a Japanese anime starts with the explicit buzzing of cicadas, it's going to be a good show. <laughs> oh, so yeah? Literally, okay. like, the first 10 seconds, when I just heard the cicadas, and then it flashes to uh, him in his apartment watching the news, I was like, bro, this show is setting the tone right uh, away. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. All right. Facts. This yeah. guy knows his man. shit, man. Dude, That's what's beginning? up. Thank you. It's not, it's not to indicate that summer in Japan or anything. Well, no, 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 no. Cicadas say, are always there, man. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, there. I was gonna say, Sasha, if you watched as many isekais as us, you would feel like this is gonna be an isekai. You, you see, like a, um, a, a guy who's just like living in his apartment. But when I saw he had a job, I was like, wait, was like already this guy's better than what we've seen in the previous isekais. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that this wasn't an isekai because he had a part, he had a job. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, I will say, I think the story definitely got a lot more interesting when he met Naoto. Not that it wasn't yeah. interesting beforehand, but I thought it was going to be like, hey man, I'm going to help everybody out that I've wronged. And then I could see that losing steam very quickly. But mm. the fact that, you know, he talks to Naoto and he's like, oh yeah, I'm your girlfriend's brother. And then my favorite part of the episode is when he's like, hey, what do you call that thing when you go back in time? And I was thinking like, they're going to have some Japanese term for it. He's just like, time <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, very original. Uh, but I see. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the show has good timing for humor. It's got a good balance of, hey, I've got this personal stuff where they developed him. And they developed this character relatively quickly. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So it shows that he's good enough to get a job, but he's not good enough to do well at it because he has no confidence. He had a girlfriend. He was cool. He was tough at one point. But everyone else evolved and he didn't and which is why he stuck the way he is so i really liked everything about it. the pacing was great uh the one thing i did truly love and david i know this is a sore point for you but the music actually when he's in the hospital and naoto comes to visit him he's like i must visit this man let me talk to him it reminds me almost of like classic naruto where basically you have like the rise of the fighting spirit or whatever it's called like that guitar lick where it's like nah, 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 nah. and it's just like it's gently in the background as these guys are talking in the hospital bed and i was like yes this is my kind of show <laughs> so i'm very curious to see uh that the fact that naoto became a policeman and he tried to save his sister's life and he couldn't added a whole layer to the story that i wasn't expecting so now i'm very very eager to see more about it like this is the perfect style of show for moi well, I want to know and what it, happened too. Like how you know, like the brothers survived, but like you know, like because didn't they die at the same time in the the other? That's what they said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, so they, they said they said, just both died. Yeah, they, yeah. They got caught up, like so, with the gang. So, but I also add on to like that's like the thing that 
surprising the most. I thought it was gonna be him just stuck in the past this whole time. I didn't realize yeah, he was gonna go back. And so I'm assuming like it's gonna be him going back and forth and like just changing outcomes. So actually, that actually like interests me, interests me too. Like, cause I think I think the first half wasn't really getting to me as much. It just felt like I don't know. It felt very okay. by by the book, but like, mm-hmm. but I think once he went back in time, that that really drew my interest. Like, okay, this is something I was not expecting. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of OJ. Just, oh, go ahead, uh, j- just curious, did any of you guys watch uh, the episode zero by chance or the special preview mm-hmm. that they had for this? No, no, I didn't know it was episode nope. zero. Well, was that spoilers? Okay. Is this what you were talking about before, Justin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there is there is an episode zero that was basically a special episode, as Ku said, which shows like pieces from the first three episodes. Oh, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Okay. Yeah. And, so so yeah, hopefully ahead, you guys didn't watch it because that shit will. I didn't realize it was for it this might show. Mess up the show I, for you. I thought it was for, oh, show. Yeah, it was it was for the show. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize it was this show. So wait, did, Ku, did you watch it then? I did by accident because I didn't know. Yeah, remember oh. it's when I it's when I originally told you I was like, dude, Tokyo Revengers is out. And then I watched <laughs> it and I was like, oh no. And I next year after I was like, don't watch it. It's spoiled. <laughs> fair, yeah. fair. Cause, Cause I felt like it kind of ruined the episode, but I still like it. But yeah, and not, I'm not gonna say anything, but, but I it went a totally <laughs> different route than I thought it was going to, which which I'm glad it did, but Okay, so I'm the only one that me and Justin is the only one that's been kind of. And I I've read the manga for for the oh, okay. series. So is the so, is the manga over? I was else still going. Up then. Yeah, uh, I think it's still going. It's still ongoing. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's still ongoing. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of like oh damn moments for me because first when I realized like it wasn't actually an isekai and it was just like him kind of reliving his past, I was just like oh damn. But then uh, when he kind of like fixed that whole thing and then he woke up back in the hospital and like and like uh, in current time, I was like oh damn. I was like what the fuck is this? <laughs> Like, cause I, cause I never saw it raised. I didn't even know this was like really a thing. But uh, so I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm yeah. really liking the show. I mean, to be honest, it's you know not done I mean? too often. I would say only erased and like Steins Gate or like. I was gonna two. say. I mean, kind of. Oh, kind of that, that handled Steins the time. Kind, kind of, kind of real life Steins too. Gate. But like real life, you didn't really go back in time. I guess you're just more. Yeah. You turn your body like younger. So. Yeah. But um. No, I'm glad to hear, though, from from Ku's point, uh, you know, even though unfortunately kind of spoiling future events, it, it it gives more context of where the show is going and you get to see more characters, which I, I do agree where if I was coming in blind from like a first episode, my concern would be, you know, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of characters yet or I'm not seeing enough to make me really feel connected to these characters. And and that is something that I will say, like, that is the bread and butter of Tokyo Revengers is the characters that are going to be introduced and a lot of their rationales for, you know, why they are part of this gang or involved in these kind of, you know, gang activities. Um, and it has a lot of depth there, which I think normally, you, you know, when you think of like, oh, they're just a bunch of delinquents, you wouldn't think like they're going to have like these really like, okay, you know, personal motivating kind right. of rationales and reasons. So, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, and I think it's something that you'll get within probably by the third or fourth episode is when it really starts to come together. Hopefully, when you if say that, adapt just, it right. Like that just makes you think about like um, the red haired uh, friend from the game. Like I'm, pre- I, I, I see him being like an important character later because he's, he he calls himself the leader of the group. And then oh, also, yeah. and there's, like, all... there's also the other guy like, uh, that's like his childhood friend too. I can see him being important as well. So I would assume um, everybody in the group would be important. I guess, but like hey, I, 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 I really like I really pay attention to the guy, the red hair guy, because like because the main character like really set him out to be like like important as like the leader of the group. So I just I'm right. just thinking about him. Um, yeah. So for episode zero, Justin Koo, would you say would we have to look th- watch that at all, or no, can we just watch that? No, no. Just, you're, just, no, you're you're gonna get it in these favor. first. Oh, three yeah, episodes, I, just, yeah. no, I just meant yeah. like in the, if there's like to a future time point, at some point, like, it doesn't even make sense logically like they literally just jump from thing to thing and you have yeah. no connection of like how, oh, how did we get here <laughs> why is this you know event happening and uh-huh. it was just a, honestly i feel like after watching it and me having read the source material up to where it is like it was made for people who know the show like it would mm. never make sense as like a a new viewer which is very weird mm-hmm. but yeah well i will mm-hmm. skip then yeah. yes interesting yeah yes. here's what um, i want to know yeah whose hand Whose hand hit him in the back of the head and knocked him in from the train? It's Naoto, bro. You yeah, just know. You I saw that soft hand. 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh my god, I have, I have my guesses too, but it, it was kind of because of I saw episode zero, so I won't say anything. Oh, okay. I'm thinking now too. It was and like now too would make sense. Yeah. But, yeah. but it would have made more sense if he did it with his toe. You know what I'm saying? No, that's why they showed a hand. Don't say that. Please don't say that. <laughs> <sighs> See, like a random ass toe. No, yeah. I, yeah. no it, uh, it would make it would make sense with Naoto because like because uh, Naoto like is all 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 about this like time time leaping. So like if, if somehow for some reason he would figure out like a way to, to time leap, I could see him just like pushing his ass into the train. If it's not Naoto, then the I, then I assume it's like one the yeah, one the other to like friends that he hasn't seen forever. So, but yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm probably that. reading way too much into it. But I feel like when they were on the swing set. And he touched Naoto's hand. That's when he went back into the current timeline. So I feel like it has to do kind of like Attack on Titan mode, where they have to touch in order, you know, to call the Titans. It, just like here, you got to touch in order to go back to time. So that's my theory. But it's only with Naoto. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he has to change yeah. the body part every single time. It's going to be pretty difficult. It's going to be very awkward too. Yeah. I see. The, I see. The, the the one other thing I will say that is not necessarily a well. So with the gang, the Tokyo Manji gang, I don't know if you guys know like what the Manji symbol looks like. It basically looks kind of like a reverse swastika, oh, but oh, it doesn't yeah. have any meaning in terms of, you know, what Nazis use use that yeah. symbol for. Um, so it is something that with that Manji gang, that symbol is, is very prevalent in the series. And from what I've heard so far, they're planning to remove it from the anime because of the backlash that it would cause. Um, so I, I don't mm. think it'll have a huge effect, but, but I know it's something that as this, you know, show originally got greenlit for an anime, people were kind of worried about like, you know, oh, that's like the iconic symbol of this gang. Like, how are they now going to get around that? So I'm interested yeah, to see sense. what, what they do, but I'm glad that they didn't like change the gang name itself. Mm-hmm. They still kept it as Tokyo Manji. So I'll keep that in my mind then. But I think that's like not not a common known fact, but I have heard many people reference that that they took it. I think not from Japanese, but I want to say they it's took like, it from the Chinese from, and like, just reversed it's from, like, it. From like Buddhism. yeah, I think it's originally like yeah Buddhism, Buddhism and stuff. Because okay. when you, there you go. Uh, fun fact, when you search on Google for like temples in Japan, like it has the manji like that that sign on Google Maps, so you can so you can see like where um like where the temple is. And the they, different they use, like temples are, yeah, and they use they use the manji Got sign, it. so. It's, so like if you didn't know, you th- you think yeah, it's like you didn't even know about it. Yeah. So this Dude, is one I'm thing in. that that's unfortunate, you know, with history and the different usages of it, it now affects you know material made for it, and so uh, it's yeah. kind of a sad thing to see when it's like you want something to keep true to the source material, but again, it does that won't affect any of like the characters and things of that. It'll just be with the gang and their kind of symbol. It'll probably either be just omitted completely, or they'll do some different twist on it. That's fine. It's a minor thing for me. I mean, now that I know like what it is, like, uh, I mean, I, I'll just keep that in mind. Yeah. Im- imagine you're like the biggest fan of this show, and you want to get a tattoo of the Manji Gang, and the tattoo artist does it backwards. You're like, come on, man! You had <laughs> yeah, one job. You lay me with a swastika. It's yeah. like, oh fuck. <laughs> oh <laughs> lord. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm glad to hear that your guys' uh, impressions of the first episode went went well because. Again, when I watched the first episode, what I knew I was a little bit hesitant. I was like, "Oh man, like I don't know if this is going to be enough to really draw in." It was the ending like new really drew new me viewers? In, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Except for yeah. the actual ending song that drew me out, I immediately turned it off after that. <laughs> I don't remember the song. I remember the ending song. So. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. It was like <laughs> Yeah, it definitely like, it definitely doesn't fit like the grit and more of like I, the the song, manly so man like gang focus. I'll hear yeah, we, we... I'm with you on that one, Sasha. <laughs> yeah, Thank if, you. If, Thank if you. I don't remember it. It couldn't have been that good. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's all right. Um, Usually, all endings is what I like remember pretty well. Oh lord! As long as they're yeah. good. Okay. So, yeah, I'm excited right. to to continue the journey along and see your guys' impression of it. Yeah. I hope it holds up to uh, what not, I've enjoyed from the manga. Do you know so. how many episodes and, this is? It's just 13. Are we just assuming it's 13? Um, right now, now it's unknown. Okay, I'm gonna assume 13. So. Then, so. I would assume 13, but man, it's got a lot of material, so it would right. definitely need to, right. to do well and get more seasons to really hit yeah. home. This is another show I picked up. This is another show that I picked up that I was not expecting to watch. <laughs> so. I, I yes. knew I was going to watch it. I heard about the hype, so yeah. So we're going to wrap it up here for Tokyo Revengers, so decide to see where this takes us for the rest of the season. Yes. And that's, yes. 
basically Fine, give it a check yeah so that's basically all of our major shows we're talking about i guess here's if you want we'll open up for like shout outs if anyone wants i guess uh, um, I guess I'll, I'll give it to Taylor first. You want to talk about food spastic? Because I know, um, like Ayusha and Ulysses were interested in hearing about that. So, you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, Fruits Basket pretty much opened up this season exactly where last season ended, uh, which was Toru learning. I'm sorry, I have no notes on this. I wasn't planning on talking That's about fine. it Just today. A quick shout out. But, yeah, what well, David? <laughs> but it was basically uh, to- Toto talking to the um, the guy who had previously been the rooster and oh learning why he can't pursue his relationship with her friend. And then she pretty much has a sleepover with her two friends because she had a really rough day and did a lot of crying. And it was very emotional and it was just a very strong start to the season. I have not read the manga, so I have no idea. But I've heard that the plot gets pretty crazy. Maybe not even crazy, but just like, you know, there's like a lot of fantastical elements of the show. I mean, they're literally like there's a bunch of different characters that are the Zodiac members. There's a whole bunch of lore that come within their family. It's kind of and and it's all just in normal, otherwise normal Japan. So I, I was always kind of trying to figure out like how that supernatural element would blend in and be explained and it, they really get into like the details of it i've heard so i'm, I'm excited to see the rest yes. of the season is it like have already... they introduced oh. all the characters of the zodiac or there's still some that you don't no, know i think they've yet? got them they, they should have them all now yeah. okay is it like already mm-hmm. way different than the original series like are we past that point we're way past okay. that point yeah mm-hmm. so all new it's been all new material for me for a while and i just my mind is just blown by this show i love it so much i could i just could not love it more so it's pretty much like, i think it it's like it's like, like as it's, it's like pretty ahead. much like the definitive like version you should watch over the original yes okay. uh, absolutely and okay. i have not heard a single person say otherwise all right sounds good yeah so um i know um you guys are watching the uh, the next gen full dive you want to talk about that a little bit too you mentioned too, this is by the uh, the cautious hero writer, so yeah, I actually wanted to get because I heard Ju- uh, Justin watched the first episode, so I was mm-hmm. wondering uh, what his thoughts were on it. Ooh. Um, I actually en- I enjoyed it a lot, you know. At, at first, I thought it was going to be your your usual kind of isekai format, um, but I, I do like the twist of isekai in the sense of you know, dumping into this full dive RPG game that's 10 years um, old. Yeah, that's 10 years old, and, you know, the the main character thinks he kind of knows exactly how everything's going to play out, and immediately as he's entered into this world, he he notices, you know, this isn't kind of the, the normal RPG full dive experience of the games of, you know, the latest era, um, and things immediately take different <laughs> twists from uh, from what we're used to with, with these kind of series, so um, I liked it, I, I enjoyed it, and I was pleasantly surprised. Cool, did you watch this? You watch this, right? Oh yeah, I watched. Okay, it. all right, yeah. <laughs> I uh, the, I, uh, it also makes it sound like that this game, even though it's like ten years old, like it's almost it almost it feels more realistic than the current games. Because mm-hmm. he even, he even mentions is like, oh man, it's like everything feels really like real. Is like where he's like feeling pain, everything else, and then he just gets in the kind of like that generic situation where he's just following the word of like the goddess that spoke to him and basically said like you know leave the town and go to this specific place. So immediately with his childhood friend. And uh, and his sister, he just says like, you know, hey, I need to leave town. And they're and the, but this is after he he declined them to pick apples or some shit. And then uh and then they're just they all have this this just this look. It's like it's like like why would you want to leave? Like we're not allowed to leave. And then he's basically just keeps kind of going for it. And then uh, his childhood friend gets really fucking pushy. And then he gets <laughs> and then the shit happens. And then he basically then uh he gets a little like name caller thing. Basically his title. Mm-hmm. What was it that he gets? Yeah, the, the, he's like, he's like, she was looking at it. She's like, friend the killer, the best you know, friend like, killer, or something. Yeah. Like that, where he accidentally somehow shoves a knife in the guy's mouth and basically exits the back of his head. Yeah, dude, they did and, not skimp on on any of that. Yeah, and then, like, and then, but the whole, also, we should probably mention that the the girl that gave like that that, uh, that got him this that basically talked him into this game. She's like a fairy or something. She's like a little. She's like a supportive type. A support, yeah, yeah. support oh, character. Support. Okay, yeah. yeah. So she's in there, and then it, ba- it basically kind of leaves it as something where uh, he probably has like the worst beginning possible you can have in a game. I'm assuming, and yeah. it also doesn't feel like it's one of those where he can just wipe the game and go back anew. It sounds like it's 
It's oh, it feels like it's a no, like this game's like a whole nother world, like a yeah. like a live, yeah. like a living yeah. world. And I feel like this this girl, you know, gave him the game obviously for a reason and, and not as he just trying to sell like, oh, you know, new games are not good. You gotta get the old stuff. It's like, nah, it's gonna go much deeper than that, probably. Yeah. Where she, I mean, she really kind of bent him over to put him I mean, in this, this crazy adventure that he's I now mean, on. I mean, to be fair, like th- this is an isekai, so I would I wouldn't be surprised if like this if this this whole thing was just her saying like where she was just just generally helping, and she believes that this is actually a better game or like realistic game, and the, the and then game. like something happens to both of them potentially. Yeah, well, yeah, and then well, I think she was also assuming that he would just follow the the that he that he would just go pick the apples like the characters were saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know that that, that didn't happen. So I, yeah. I would like to see like uh, what happens from here with that. Um. Also, her breasts are way too big. They they just look uh, like uh, unnaturally big. I mean, it's an anime. I mean, you can't really complain. They, just look weird. Like, they got the they, they got, got their jiggle physics down. They they know who they're you know, targeting. Just... And then <laughs> okay, all right, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. But all all I gotta say is <laughs> if if the MC took notes from the previous anime that this guy came from, uh, the guy that wrote the show, or really cautious hero, dude, he would have been just fine. <laughs> but if you guys haven't seen it, you guys won't know what I'm talking about. But yeah. uh yeah. Uh this is what happens when you're too sure of yourself <laughs> and you think you know what you're doing. Yeah. And this is what happens, right? This is why you gotta tread carefully when you get transported to or we try out new things. So yeah. strong first episode. I I'm it's uh it's it's something I actually wanna really wanna see where the second episode leads to. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm I'm interested in the show too. I just didn't have time to watch it before we started, so you will I, I think you'll like the first episode. You'll definitely uh, uh, find some thing, just stupid, ridiculous comedy. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. I just want I'll I'll give a shout out to um the Nagatoro like the don't bully me like Nagatoro show whatever like because I, I knew there was gonna be a meme show. I knew it was gonna be popular by a lot of people, but like the effort they put in the animation like this. <laughs> I don't know, like, they put so much effort in this animation, and I, people say the soundtrack was good, too. Like, I'm surprised, like, how much it's going into the show. Um, I think, I've, I know Stratton's not a fan of the main girl. I think most people got to call her a bitch, but... She is. I kind of, I will say, like, I, like the main guy kind of deserves it, just because, like, he's such a wimp, and, he, like, he, he starts crying He's trying to live his life, man. He's just trying to live his life, okay? And know. then you got this bitch coming out of nowhere, and just make it, like, basically making fun of him, you know, grand, uh... Squeezing his balls. I mean, come on. It's squeezing. No, not literally. Okay. Not Let's literally. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, no, I should probably clear that up. Really. Yeah. Not really. No. Yeah, I should probably clear that up. <laughs> I know. So, I, I mean, Here, what you say, sir? I read a little bit of the manga, and like, I thought it was whatever, but this first episode I actually kind of enjoyed. So, I think I'll try to keep up with it. So. Yeah, I'll be watching that one, too. I don't really know what my thoughts are yet, but uh, I felt tense watching it. Like, I'm, oh, I don't know. It's a little uncomfortable, but like, not in a bad way. I'll keep watching, too. I just, I don't know. I just had this feeling of, like, just, like, I know I'm supposed to feel better with the main guy, but at the same time, it's like, you kind of deserve it, bro. Yikes. Okay. So. Um, any other shows you guys want to shout out to? Mm. Oh, yeah, um, yes. yes. There was, sorry, I was just uh, messaging. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, there's a sorry, real quick. I'm just trying to follow, like, kind of like the shout out like list. Um, uh, what we if people want to say something about it's too sick to call this love. Uh, there's some dropped it. Yeah, there are some <laughs> uh, opinions uh, about this and thoughts. So if uh, you guys want to, oh, you go a little more, already, huh? I did not like it at all. I, I mean, I like I don't really know what i was wanting going into it i just thought i would give it a shot but from my perspective basically like this guy is every girl's worst nightmare like he's like the quintessential like nice guy who like will not like ex- you know when girls say that condescendingly what we mean is like that some guy that just will not like take the hint and because he's not being mean to you he's trying to take care of you do good nice things for you blah whatever doesn't matter whether you want it or not or ask for it or any of those things. He just expects that you're going to take it. And when, she, when he asks her if he's being annoying and she's like, yes, you're being annoying. And he's like, I'm going to just keep doing it anyways. And he <laughs> says that right to her face. I, I, it was just a hard nope for me. I, it's just, 
I, I, I'm sure there's going to be like redeeming things and character development and blah, blah, blah. But it was just, coming from like that starting point. I just can't do it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, if you had to choose between this and Higa Hero, I would probably pick Higa Hero for sure. Yeah. It sounds a lot better. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't okay. watched it, yeah. but, if I, but I might switch to that one instead. I would definitely recommend that. It has a better message per se, and I think the characters are probably be more likable. And I think the animation is a lot better too, like uh, for the characters, and whatnot. So uh, you might like it a lot more. But yeah, I'm still gonna watch it. Kind of, I kind of want to see where it goes out. But yeah, you do get that kind of like, like a bad vibe from like what it's kind of like portraying as for the main guy. So uh, I, I can see that. I can see why you wouldn't like it. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I have for this one. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't have anything else. <laughs> all right, uh, next one. Um, uh, David, did you watch Zombieland? Saga Revenge? Oh, I did chance? not. Did that air? Okay. It did air. Oh, I um, know it aired. Okay. Yeah, uh, just a little, little bit about this one. Um, a, at some point, they they thought that, I guess they, they uh, booked a concert at some giant venue area that they thought, uh, I, I'm assuming like, the guy that's like the, the head guy, really annoying. He, he just thought like they must have been like this you big, like him. and then I, dude, he's so fucking annoying. But this like episode, I thought, this episode though, this episode I thought he was fucking hilarious because like he's he's currently like in like the uh, he's like at his like at the most bottom point of his life, it, which reminds me he looks like Aaron. He has like that hair. Oh he has God. like that scraggly beard, but he has glasses. Like he basically has a hangover like twenty four seven. I thought like man, this would be Aaron in like the now times. But um, <laughs> but but the whole thing is when but when they go to this they go to this concert. He it sounds like it was a lot of money to book this this giant venue, and only I think only like five hundred people showed up. It was just like this little tiny group, and they were basically like performing for this, and the entire stadium was just empty. And then they just zoom up to the guy, and he's just like with a serious face. He's like he's like, is this hell? And then it, <laughs> I thought, I was just laughing. I was like, what the fuck? This is the most ridiculous thing. But then you kind of go to the point where they're, it, it sounds like they're in crazy debt. They're trying to find like their bearings again. This guy's basically just drinking himself like a, a, like a day to night at some sort of like some sort of local bar. And then, um, but towards the end though, they kind of like jump started back in where they, they just start back from scratch in a sense, like back at the, that first bar when they, when they start doing like metal and head banging. And, and then they have like their two, just like they're very like intense fans there. And uh, eventually, like, the rest of the group, like metal group, they kind of get into it, and then that's where kind of where it left off. But it's it basically sounds like um, they're just they, they're basically trying to get back to like where they were because it sounds like uh, they're in crazy debt. <laughs> hey, so I, as long as I get my rap battles, I'll be fine. That hasn't happened yet, but uh, again, it was only one episode, so we'll see. Yeah. I'm sure they'll, they'll really hit want. every genre it's like, again. It's like the one I'm, part I'm waiting for is the rap battle. <laughs> Yeah, they'll, I'm sure they'll hit every genre. Like, even though I actually really enjoy like the first episode last season of like when they were doing like the screaming and metal, the metal where they're yeah. just doing like those ridiculous like zombie headbanging stuff. Yeah, I thought that was really good. But anyway, no, it's it's I'm still gonna watch it. It'll, it'll be enjoyable to watch. Like again, though, the the their little performances they do is is in CGI. It's not the worst CGI though, but it's also expected. So I'm not gonna like hammer it. It was no, yeah, right. it was there I, in the first know, season. So I'm not why, I'm not gonna hammer it. I don't know why I didn't know it's the first season then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's nothing. I'm gonna hammer it. It, it was it was to be expected. I knew it was coming, and it honestly it works for this show. Uh, as long as it doesn't happen for like the rap battles, because the rap battles were very well animated, and it was pretty it was pretty <laughs> awesome. So, but that's all. All right, nice. And I don't know if you guys want to talk about the SSSSSSS Dine Dine Z Man. I mean, I haven't watched it, so I can't say. Okay. So right then. And then uh, Mars Red. Red, if you guys want to give any kind of like just I, early I, thoughts. I didn't watch it, but I'm so curious. How is it, Justin? Yeah, so I mean, nothing new because I watched the premiere of episode one and episode one was officially this week. Um, I think, as I said on last week's show, uh, the biggest things that it has going for it is um, one, you know, the, the art style gives kind of Monogatari-esque vibes, which I think is kind of unique in, in its is own it, regards. Is it not um, by Shaft? Or is it like someone else? I don't think it is. It was by a studio that I didn't recognize. Okay. Let me. So I have the list of shows here. It is done by Signal.md okay. is the animation studio. Um, and yeah, I don't think I've watched anything else that they've done. Actually, they're they're going to be doing Platinum End 
oh, the sequel they? to Death Note. Okay. So, Ooh. I don't, I've heard um, them before, but I don't remember what shows I watch. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. I haven't seen anything Wait, else from their, is, their list so, of shows. It's real quick. Is Platinum Man actually a sequel to Death Note? Oh, not no, sequel to, no, sorry. Just the, the, the next the next creation after, of the author of after, Death Note. Sorry. Fuck, fuck I, I was going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, whoa, no, 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 no. Thank you for okay. keeping me you know, <laughs> honest. But sometimes my brain just goes full steam and I don't think of the best words to use. So thank you. I was going to say, Sasha, Brian, that might be something else <laughs> man to check out. My bad. Um, but no, the, the art style for it is... is pretty unique and standalone the music was really great in episode one i think if anything what will cause it to not stand out would be the story um it is focused on vampires um and so i know there have been a lot of shows that have kind of been in that space in the past and shows specifically that have vampires I feel like, like i haven't watched like, many like focus. good vampire i mean i didn't i didn't watch like like seraph the end but i feel like i haven't okay watched, that that's what this is kind of reminding I haven't me watched of like seraph the end. Show, so and then there's also yeah. another show called um serious the jaeger which i think came out a few seasons ago as a netflix anime i didn't watch any um and that was kind of a, a similar one as well so okay um again don't know enough i think it has you know potential to be kind of standalone and more unique but we'll have to see in the All episodes right. to come That's all I got for uh, for Mars Red. All right. Then I think that's, yeah, I think that's, the, I think that's the last show we have. We'll just, yep. I'll just uh, give a reminder to um, we have so we still have to your attorney coming out because it airs tomorrow, and then uh, yep. me and Strand will be watching the Childhood Friend. Um, oh, I'm sure. Cool. You got to be part of that too, right? Uh, if my schedule allows it. The rom com where the Childhood Friend won't lose. If my schedule allows it. Okay. Yeah, and the right. Childhood and... Friend will definitely lose. Yeah. Oh, rude. <laughs> Yes. Justin, then, are you gonna watch yeah, it or no? Right. Pro- probably not. Okay. And then, I'm too and then, stacked, yeah. man. No and worries. Then me and Ku, we got um second season of Demon School, Yuruma Kun coming out on I think Friday. So. Baberu, baby. Yeah, <laughs> Baberu yeah, High School. <laughs> so I don't think I don't, I don't like the, the the first I don't like the band from the first opening is coming back, so Sucks. fuck. Well, yeah, I think, yeah. um, but Two Year Eternity will be one of our main shows as well. We're going to be talking about yeah. that. There's a lot we're of just hype assuming, for it. Yeah, we're just assuming because with the hype, it's going to be a lot of uh, discussion. So we will see. Yeah, so I think we're going to wrap up there. So this is technically kick off the start to spring season. A lot of shows. So it's, yeah. we talk and nothing's really set in stone. So we don't really know what we are keep and what we might, what yeah. we'll, we might yeah, end up dropping later. So just checking Ooh. things out for now. We wanted to at least get the shout outs, just like all the shows that we're that we're at least watching or that they're on a radar. So just let us know, like in comments, like either a, like a YouTube or Twitch or whatever, and then let's see if we can just like keep them or check other shows yeah. out. Just let us know. Yeah, let us know what, which ones you guys are watching, which one you're most interested in. So, all right. So we're gonna end it here for today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thanks to the audience for being here. Uh, the UCs were here earlier, so thanks for being here. Uh, Darren, you always show up too, so always happy to see you in chat. And yeah. um, Pinky Tizzle and Yahoo as well. Yahoo, yeah. Um, yeah. We can... I know you were here for eight. You wanted to hear eighty six and Vivi, Vivi, but that was yeah. at the beginning that, of that, our that was, uh, beginning was, of our podcast. That was the first show, so yeah. But we're very hyped. They're both very good, yeah. very solid beginnings. Yeah. And then uh, thank the panel for joining me today. Thanks, guys. Always fun talking to you. Of course. No problem. Yeah. It's nice it's having good. us all together. Yeah. Exciting <laughs> start to the spring welcome. season. No. <laughs> Yeah, we'll lot, oh yeah, this season a lot more hyped than uh, what we were expecting. There was just a lot of unknowns this season because like winter was a lot of sequels. This is like so much more original and like yeah, they're holding off, solid off though. The radar. Like they're yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Sorry, okay, um, that was it. <laughs> yeah, we'll end it there. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye. 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 Seren, cue that ultra <laughs> music. <laughs> But just look to the outro you people. look beyond you could make an unbreakable bond okay all right we're done there you go